Welcome to the Intoxicated Podcast, a weekly comedy talk show that dives into the personal lives of comedians, experts, and creators. I'm your host, Sarah McClellan, a very amateur stand-up comedian and self-proclaimed sad girl. It's the comedy podcast with a lot of heart. Feel hard and talk hard. This is the Intoxicated Podcast. It's a very small batch. It's hard to like, cause yeah, you're like in between there and you don't really yeah. have too many quote unquote classmates. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Are we started? <laughs> it's, it's very lonely. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you're with you're the level that I'm lonely. at because everyone's better Shut than me. Shut the fuck up for a second. <laughs> like everyone's you're literally friends with every like established <laughs> comics. Like yeah, Travis. It's, it's still not the same. It's not the same thing. But because the, I still see them as I don't want to say idols, but like I I see them as like well, they're the wise elders. Yeah, but the you know they're not they're not in the trenches with me where I'm at currently. Yeah, but like the fact that you're friends with those wise elders and the yeah. fact that you're close with them, you're forced to step your game. That's why you've gotten as good as you have so mm -hmm. far mm -hmm. is because when you're around like people who Pros. are better, yeah, it forces you to step your game up. Yeah, you know if you want to hang true. out with like you know the people who aren't like you know whatever, uh, you're cla fine. I mean, yeah. but. You got there early because you were friends with Travis. You were friends with Vaughn. You were friends with all these people. It took me a right. while to get in with those guys. Right, 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 you know? right, right. I had to like spend my time with fucking Albert Coombs. You realize right. how much pain that does to your psyche? I mean, you have to be on, but he forces you to be on all the time because that guy's yeah. always on all the time. Uh, my favorite is when Albert does an impression of himself. <laughs> have you ever heard that? Where like I don't think so. We're all doing impressions of him, and then he's just like, ah, oh, here's my impression of Albert Coombs. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just plugs his nose. Ah, my cock. It's just, <laughs> I love that guy. Bless his soul. He's great. Uh, that guy's yeah, brother. and that's why I say, if even if you don't deserve an opportunity, take it. Because yeah. the James Mullinger thing, I knew I didn't deserve it. I, no, no, no. And But I was like, I okay, I'm going to try my best. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to take it as a challenge to rise above yeah of course my insecurities and then i did it and now i hate myself again writing new stuff at open mics but that's the cycle of comedy that's what it is but also like you got to learn to love that cycle man it's yeah. tough but try to find the positive in it because you do have you have you were able to write jokes that worked before yeah know that if you can't come up with ideas eventually it'll come to you that mm. whole we oh, all like have that, that feeling of I don't know if I'll ever be able to write a joke again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And big then time. you always do. Big time, big time, big time, always big do. time. Um, okay, well, we're fired. We're we're rolling. We're uh, here. We're not only zinging, we're zagging. We're zigging and zagging. Yeah. Um, I'm stoked to be here with somebody I've wanted to have on in this new iteration of the podcast. Um, oh God, I don't remember when your first episode was. It was pro less than a year in for me. So it might have been what? Was it less than a year? In yeah, I would say journey? if I'm not mistaken, because I think I last did it before I went to Hell's Basement to do a show with maybe oh. Brittany. I could be, so July. I'm gonna go ahead and it was summer. It was July around. or June of 2019. Yes, that was less than a year in for me. Um, second time solo guest, but has been on many times with other people. Chris Halas. Hey. Oh my Hello. gosh! Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're welcome. Uh. <laughs> You are doing me a favor because I, <laughs> I I certainly did not have a backlog and realize I had to record quite quickly. Well, I you... saw your story on Instagram and I realized, oh, yeah, it's been a while and I haven't done a new thing. I was like, because I've been on with other people, but I was like, fuck it, I want to do a solo one. Um, And the solo ones are really fun now because of the segments. Yeah. So it's a different vibe. It's not just like what the fuck are we talking about? Let's yeah. scramble the whole time. And it's a little more structured and stuff. Yeah, no, um, I've been listening. It's uh, it's sounding good. Yeah. yeah. And I like, yeah. And you're right. Like I like bringing people on who like have never been on solo before yeah. because like, yeah, it's, it's a different, whole different thing. When you, when you have another guest on, it's hard to compete with the chemi chemistry between the guests. Oh my God. You yeah. know, I, you know, to this. this day, I apologize for no. the uh, banana boys podcast. No, because it's <laughs> beautiful. It is. But at the same time, like, 
I I wanted to try to like keep it on track. Well, Ka- I should have been keeping it on Albert track. Albert is always on and Kyle is an absolute dumbass. So like it's really mm-hmm. hard for all of us when we're around each other. To, we never have serious conversations. We do sometimes, but it's very much like brief and then somebody brings up something and then we're all just attacking each other. That's all right. It yeah. yeah, but that's fun though. But yeah, no, really that, I fun. liked that chaotic episode. It is, I don't remember the episode number, but go back and find it. It's called Off the Rails with the Banana Boys, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, there was a lot of, a lot of dumb moments in that. We even did like a 30 minute live after thing, which oh even my God. Mo- uh, just utter stupidity. <laughs> oh my God. Anytime I'm around those guys, I feel my IQ dropping, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but then again, like most of the comics in this scene, like nobody's hanging around. The only person that I hang around in this scene and I'm like, oh, they're smart. Kyle Carpenter. Everybody else. Like the just, great and powerful Kyle Carpenter. Oh, God, he just he makes me feel like I know I'm not that smart. But when I'm around him, I'm like, oh, I'm really not that smart. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's super intelligent. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. And just one of the best writers in this city. Oh, yeah. He's very um, he's very methodical. He's just he's a technician. He's super. I mean, he's one of my uh, one of my favorites. I got to co-headline with him uh, oh, yeah, at the Comedy, Comedy Cove. Cove. And uh, it was awesome to be able to just see him do 30 minutes. You know, and just be like, oh, um, wow. Yeah. We're so used to seeing each other do shorter sets. Uh, and then when we go long, it's like 15 minutes. But there's a difference between 15 and 30 plus. God, is there ever. Yeah. And just being able to see him do about 30, it was just like, oh, man, like I love because him and I are similar in the sense that like we write like we do longer sets. There's kind of an arc to the things we do. Yeah. So I loved being able to see like, oh, let's see what he pieces together. What order? Like, oh, how's he end it? Like, you know, I love right. love watching longer sets like that. Oh, yeah. it's That's phenomenal. Um, and right off the top, we should say that you're doing something really cool coming up. Yeah. Um, so plug away. So what's this? You're doing a mixtape recording on yeah. June 22nd. June 22nd, Carlton, two shows. We got an early show and a late show. It's me and the original asses of Halifax comedy. It's going to be myself, Albert Coombs, Kyle Barnett, Kyle Carpenter, Joe Harfouche, Jim Temple, Brandon Michael, and one of my favorites, the hilarious Emma Mater. We're all doing it. We're all like roughly in the same class as well. Yeah. And... With the exception of the two Kyles, or I would say a class ahead. But um, right. Jim is moving at the end of the summer. He's moving back to uh, Toronto. I got wind of this, and I, I didn't know if it was. Well, like he's tr- from Toronto. School's wrapping up for him, so he's ah. going to be moving back. And we jokingly, like, okay. uh, we all became close at like a party uh, in late 2019 at Brandon Michael's place. And, uh, we jokingly said like, you know, uh, we'll fucking do a mixtape recording or something like that. As a joke. Or like not overly serious. And then we were like, like little by little, as we got better, Mm -hmm. um, we were like, why not? Like we'll do like, we'll each do like shorter sets. Uh, we're probably each going to do about seven each. And maybe edit each set down to five minutes, depending on what, like the comic wants to keep in the uh, recording. And, We'll just put it out there. Like I think a compilation, a compilation, a good compilation in terms of uh, like the thing about this is you look at the comics on this show. There's not one comic who's like another comic on that show. Mm -hmm. There's such very, you have alternative guys, super alternative guys like Jim Temple. And then you have somebody who's super dark and just a dense joke writer, like Emma Mater. And you got me and you got Albert Coombs, who's just more of like a, you know, a, a straight up non sequitur funny type of joke writer. Yeah. I think it's going to be a cool, I think it's going to be a cool thing. And yeah, we're doing two shows. Travis Lindsay is going to be hosting for us mm-hmm. and the great Richard is going to be doing the audio. Oh, for us. good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, so the, go Richard to Denoyer. that. Yeah. Go to those shows. It's really cool to be, to watch album recordings. Uh, yeah. People So please, please go check these asses out. I yeah. Say that. Cause that's the, Right of the show. <laughs> and they are all assholes. So there you go. It's very fitting. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's very fitting. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I'm I'm excited about it. It really was like somebody forgetting a blunt stone at that party that started the group chat that we're all a part of. Mm. And then through that group chat, it's become kind of like a men's rights group. Mm. And we've all become <laughs> so much closer as a result. <laughs> Emma's in there. <laughs> Emma's Poor not in Emma. Emma's not in the group chat, but she's in oh, another oh, she's oh, in like <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. 
yeah, we got it. We got to You know, we're not, oh. we're not. We're not that progressive. You hear that, Emma? You're not. <laughs> you're not in the group chat. No, no. Emma's in another group. Like she's actually in multiple other group chats with us. It's like there's. First of all, really there nice. is too many group chats in this goddamn scene. I cannot keep track of it. Anytime somebody starts up a. Oh, there. I have them all muted. Unless oh. someone mentions me, I can't. Oh yeah, I can't. I can't do it. It's just too distracting. There's only a couple that I don't have muted, but like I'm I'm in like group chats with those guys. I'm in group chats with Emma. Me and Albert and Travis have our own group chat what? on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. I'm um, feel free to invite me to group chats, everybody. I'm in like none. Other than that Halle Comics. Well, I guess there's a no, couple of female there's ones. No, there's but... none. We don't need Halle Comics. <laughs> no, we don't. It's never about comedy. Well, Halle Comics started from Francois and Ian and them opening up Yucks and saying, Hey, can you promote yeah. that Yucks is starting back up or whatever? But they don't need our help. They're selling out as much as they can. They don't. Yeah, they don't. They don't need our help. No. Um, so that's that's very exciting. So yeah. how do you know what you're going to do for that? Well, I uh, anytime I do longer sets, I, I mean, I'm pretty lucky. I do have a, over the I Travis is obviously the most prolific person in this scene. Nobody churns out. I, more. I disagree. <laughs> He's a, he really is a chinless piece of shit. Um, no, but he is the most prolific person in the scene. Like he churns out more minutes than anybody. Um, and I don't know if there's a close second, but obviously you got guys like Dan, you got Claire and all that stuff. But I really do think like in this scene, like I, I definitely do put out a a lot of material. I, I, I'm always writing shit and I looked at it like anytime I do longer sets, like uh 30 minutes or whatever, I'm like, I have a lot of material that I'm not putting in here, like a lot of shit. So I was like, I'm going to take stuff that I probably wouldn't put on a solo thing later, because like I said, my sets uh. have like an arc to it. Like mm -hmm. there's like uh, topics that I touch on. And then I have a lot of what I would call miscellaneous material yeah. that doesn't really fit in mm -hmm. as well. And I'm like, this shit mm -hmm. works. Why don't I just take that stuff, work it out, and work it out, put that on the uh, and idea. that way, like, and here's another thing: we're not burning shit by doing this. If we put it on an album, we can always do it again. Oh, of course. We don't give. I a don't fuck. understand that whole. Like, I mean, I kind of get it, it all, but it, also, like, I don't. It so. matters if you have a following. Like, yeah. it matters. Here's who you're. If it you're matters, famous, it matters. Yeah. If you're. Bill Burr or Taylor Tomlinson. Yeah. It does not matter yes. if you're Albert Coombs. Okay. Yeah. It does not matter if you're Chris Halaf. It does not matter for us. We can put out all our shit. Doesn't make a fucking difference. Put it out. Put out as many clips as you want. Record yeah. your shit. Do whatever you want. It's your material or whatever. Yeah. So like, yeah, I uh, the stuff that I would be putting on the album would be stuff that doesn't necessarily fit when I do like, you know, middles or something like that, or when I do like 30 plus sets, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, what I mean? So, mm -hmm. and there's a lot there. So I'm just like, okay, like right now I'm trying to narrow it down mm -hmm. and it's kind of a fun process right now. I'm working on some new stuff, but come early June, the next few weeks, I'm going to be hammering out like a set mm -hmm. for like, you know, the album. Mm -hmm. recording. So it's going to be That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, no, it's pretty Sweet. cool. It's, it's to nice to have something to like, like doing the JFL showcase too. Like it was fun to have something oh, yeah. to prepare for. You yeah. know what I mean? Like to at least get that down. You yeah. Know? Like, oh, no, that's fantastic. I got this. Okay. Seven minutes. All right. Let me try to put together a set and like work it out. That was a really like, that was a yeah. fun process. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. 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 Did anyone get, no one got picked from Halifax. I mean, like, is that right? Or what? I don't know how things work. It's not, um, what do you call it? Uh, I, if, if it's, anybody it's not got an audition, uh, it's it's a showcase, but like there's people who may have gotten reached out to for other things so far. I don't know about the actual Montreal one, but I, you know, there's some uh, people, uh, there's okay. a couple that I'm aware of that JFL had been already eyeing. Ooh, and so, right. you know, they there might be some stuff, you know, coming out soon, some news from some of them or whatever. But yeah, wow. really, it's um, it's just an opportunity to put yourself on their radar type of deal. Right. Do you, do, um, so when you know that you're performing for someone who's judging you professionally, is that tough? <laughs> is that, do you feel the pressure in that? Do you, do you find that you, um, 
you perform differently or your your mindset going into it is a little more I'm definitely tense. I would I would say I'm a little I'm not as loose cuz the, yeah. the, the the set is tighter and yeah. there's not as much like room to fuck around or whatever because like if you're performing for like yeah. you know uh JFL bookers or any booker in general like you don't want to do crowd work and start no. talking to like you know and risk going off the rails Exactly so like I think uh the difference I wasn't more or less nervous as I would be in any other like you know bigger show but it was like the the difference was I was just not as loose yeah. and for better or for worse. Like I do like to be a little just a just a smidge loose in my sets or whatever. Oh yeah. So it definitely did feel different. But I I got off stage and I was like that like you know yeah I was happy with it. So yeah 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 I I did notice that I watched I didn't watch the night you were on mm-hmm. I watched the second night I was there too um and I did notice it was very like yeah every time someone instantly hit the stage was right into jokes like there was no it yeah. was it was there was a purpose you know yeah you don't go <laughs> hey uh, anybody have birthdays tonight like what the fuck are you doing like, you know? who's single yeah who's single God, oh, so fucking fucking this guy fucking looks like an idiot like you know yeah Bad yeah crowd work yeah you gotta you gotta focus and this is what I'll uh, before we get into this conversation which is probably gonna result in us hitting each other yeah um I will say that Chris is one of the har- most hard working comics on the scene you oh. are Thank you. Buddy. You are constantly on mics, and it's yeah, it's Thanks, uh, buddy. you know, it's uh, not something that like I do feel like a lot. There's a lot of funny people, mm-hmm. but there's the work ethic hustle. I hate the word. It's a fucking buzzword. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's that uh, drive that I think not everyone has. But I think you have that. Thank you, buddy. I, yeah, I mean, like I like to think I do. I get that from my dad. I get that from like his uh, his. He's just, he never doesn't do anything. Like right. we were talking about that earlier where it's just like, he is the hardest working person I've ever met. And I think I inherited that from him, mm. but also like, I love comedy. I love the, yeah. like, I think like, I mean, I yeah. love comedy. I love the art form. There's a reason why I got into it because like, mm. I fucking love stand up. I want to learn how to get better at it. And <clears throat> when I do something, I take it seriously. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I'm not there to fuck around and you know, I'm here to have fun with my friends or whatever, maybe afterwards. But like, if we're going out to, if I'm working on some shit like tonight, mm. I'm going there to work on some shit. I'll have a laugh with my friends after. But like in the meantime, like I take it seriously. Like I got into it because I love the art form. I think some people get into it because they like attention. Attention. And that's, there's two different types of people, people who get Mm -hmm. into it because they actually, I think Vaughn had something similar, which was like, you know, people who uh, love comedy and people who love laughs. My, uh, I would alter Mm -hmm. that to say people who love comedy and people who just want attention. Mm -hmm. And I do like the spotlight and, and being on stage and feeling special. And I do think that we're seeing that with some, of the newbies coming in where you're like mm. oh okay you can see who's like you really can seriously. see you can yeah. separate who taking it seriously who's actually got potential mm-hmm. versus who is just there to fuck around or whatever mm-hmm. but here's the thing like There's nothing wrong the, with that either it's just yeah. it's just it is two different approaches yeah to it of course and, and, and it, it's going to ugh, i hate using the word thin out the herd but um like, there's only i don't know Open my comedy. It's like, yeah. What are we? What know, are we doing? What the fuck are we? It's. It takes a certain type of person to endure the harshness of what the true open mic scene is. Because if you just do certain rooms, yeah. If you're only doing the rooms that make you feel good, yeah. Um, you're not gonna get that true view of it. You gotta go to Gus's and oh, man. show up and have two people there and not know if you're doing a show or not. You gotta show up to Gus's and do. <laughs> Perform for five drunk people who are like talking back at you. Oh yeah, like you gotta do those those shittier rooms because if you can even get a chuckle out of two people. Oh man, well that's how I started. Oh, yeah. Like I started like literally my first few rooms were my first set was at Oasis back when Britney was hosting. That's how long ago this was. It's wild. And it was just the comics. Brutal. Yeah. Next room Freeman's doesn't even exist anymore. Freeman's fucking <laughs> brutal. <laughs> then I did Gus's just comics fucking brutal like three in a row of like some of the hardest rooms in this city and then eventually i got to do like a show where like the audience was actually like nice or supportive whatever and i'm glad i did it that way the fact that and that's what i like i love seeing the newbies these newer comics go to like foggy let's say foggy's the room we're referring to yeah very hot great room i love testing out new shit there at least getting the cadence down. yes that's it I love seeing them try the other rooms, but then like legitimately 
come, like they try it and then they come back. Yeah. And it's just like, there you go. That's, yeah. that's, so that's the, what I it mean, is. You have to do that. If you want to get better, that's just the way you got to do it. And uh, no other way. I, I mean, there is like some people like these new comics that are coming in that I think like, I mean, we were talking about it earlier. I don't know if we got it on tape, but like John Pickett. I John think. Pickett, shout out. Shout he gets, out. He gets to shout out every episode John lately. John Pickett, yeah, he's great. Like, I mean, yeah. he's, he's got a lot of potential. He cares. Like, I remember when I first met him, he was asking me all these specific questions, and I was just like, whoa, like, you really, okay, you really care. And then Carolyn Davis, another one who's, like, yeah, writing jokes, so great good. stage presence. Uh, Ryan Williams, very charming on stage. Like, you know, he's got something. And... um <laughs> I mean that I mean, just, and, and jokes as well. But like, you know, no, very he's, like No, he's great. I'm yeah. just thinking about him and he burned me so good. Oh yeah. Uh after we were like he was on after me, which works perfect because we met at a sex party, so we have a cool like kind of origin story. Gross. Uh <laughs> But it was funny because I have a joke about like my kink is not making men happy. And then when he went up, he said, thank God that's your kink because you do it really well. <laughs> and it was it was just so perfect. Yeah, it was buddy. just like, that's the most perfect roast joke. Well like, done, Ryan. Right? Well done, well done Ryan. And uh, another one, Josh Pillane, who's uh, newer, but super yeah. mature. Very, like, uh, and as structured to the stuff he's doing and he cares like he's another one who's he actually he like i use this app a lot of comics uh, use this app called comedy companion to like keep the track of their jokes and all that stuff yeah he's an app developer and actually what? because like comedy oh, companion wouldn't work on his phone he made his own stand-up app hang to, on like, what's it called uh is it I, gag something no 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 no, no. he I, just he just it's very new in fact i feel bad because he said like hey like if you have time give it a shot like try oh it out just God. give me some feedback i haven't done it yet i think it's just stand up and then are at, at the end so stand up or whatever i think it's a working title but i was gonna say because i tried to find comedy companion on iphone and it didn't exist but there's this other one Stand upper, and I I should try it at some point just to give him some feedback because that's what he asked me to do. I haven't done it yet. Sorry, Josh, but I will. Oh, I would totally try it too. But uh, I'm still trying to figure out like how to yeah how, where to. I have a Google Doc now. I've I've been using Google Docs. That's good. I mean that's something that. Uh, but stand upper, stand up stand R, up. stand up R, something like that. Okay. I'll have to I'll have to look into it after. But yeah. Some uh, some good talent. There's some good talent coming up. They yeah. they make me feel like garbage for not writing, but you know, good for you guys. Yeah, uh, writing new sets all the time and then making me feel like shit. Going uh, up well, talking about the same shit I've been talking about for a while. Well, that's another thing I see sometimes. Where I see like some <laughs> love people. you guys. I'm not I'm trying not trying to be like negative. I just but like I I heard a couple of new comics like very new uh, say like. Uh, yeah, like um, uh, um, I'm do. I wrote this seven minute set yesterday, yeah. and it's like, yeah, yeah. And if it goes well, I'll write another seven. I'm like, yeah, that's not how it works. So many of them have that mentality. Yeah, where it's just like, no, you you build it joke by joke. Uh, and you perfect. Yeah, you perf You just you slowly build an act. Yeah, I mean, you're not Travis. You're not writing like you know five seven minutes at a time. And Travis yeah. is a storyteller, so like it's 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 a different type of thing. But like. Yeah, I mean, blows like, my mind. I hear, I hear them say that. I'm like, ah, dude, you, do, you blows don't get. Mind. I want to tell them, but I also I don't do. give an absolute <laughs> fuck. I tell them. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, cause, I mean, because I'm friends with some of them, right? So, no, no, like, no. I care, so, but I don't care enough to talk. To, I don't like talking to people in the first place. So, like, I don't want to start a conversation because then they're gonna have questions. I'm like, I regret this already. You don't want to start a conversation oh, because apparently God. it's a conversation. Oh my I mean, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the amount of times I'll message somebody on a dating app and then like they'll respond. I'll be like, this was a mistake. I was I thought I was in the mood, but I'm not. I, I thought I was just talking at somebody. Yeah, I was just hungry. Like yeah, that's yeah. all it was. Oh I gosh. had a sandwich and now I don't want to talk to them. I'll say it. I just go, I just go, why are you writing a whole new set? Why don't you do some jokes from your old set? And mm. if you have new jokes, yeah. develop chunks, people. Like if you if you're if you're writing similar things with themes, like yeah. make it a chunk and then for some sets, you can do that full chunk, yeah. or you can just do a couple jokes from that chunk and then do other things. Well, yeah, you cut out what doesn't work, which is a yes. lot of it for them. Yeah. And you keep the stuff. I mean, like, it's true. Like, you cut out what doesn't work, and you keep the shit that does. Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. as simple as that, you dumb fucks. <laughs> Fucking oh do it, you know. Is, slipping we're gonna into get in trouble with this one. <laughs> Are we? Uh, I don't know. Maybe not. Nah, I, nah, I, yeah, I, I nah, I'm just kidding. I love seeing the love new talent, guys. but yes, there are things to learn. Um, but have fun too, or try to, because I do think sometimes people can take comedy too seriously. Yeah, I know. and then that takes the. 
fun out of it. Yeah, definitely have some fun. I mean, like, it's, I mean, like, dude, like, fucking classic Vaughn and Travis, none of this really matters. Like, none of this matters. So have fun. But if you're going to keep doing it, if you're going to keep putting in for spots, you know, also try to get better. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you got to do. All right. We're going to do the first segment Assumption segment. Um, I have a few about you. Oh God. So this is, well, this is where, well, it's tough to do these for people that I know fairly well. Okay. We'll see how well you know me. Uh, and I don't, and I was trying to think back to our first episode and I don't know if any, if we touched on any of these. So I wrote, you're not someone who bails a lot. You're reliable and you show up when you say you'll show up to something. You don't bail on plans. If you have a plan, you're going. Yes, for better or for worse. Like I, yeah. I definitely that's true. Yeah. I would say, hey. Ding ding. Sarah. Got the first one. First right thing. And you've it wasn't done a mean life. one. Look at that. Yeah, how about that? Um, no, you're right. I definitely, if I have a plan, I very rarely break that plan. And even if I desperately don't want to go, I will still go. I hate canceling last minute. Yeah, that's I the worst. usually don't do that. I definitely don't cancel mics. Um, but yeah, you're definitely dead on there. I get that again. I get that from my dad. My dad's just one of those guys like, Hey, if you make a commitment, you fucking follow through with that. You know what I mean? Ah, but also the, the, oh, actually, am I allowed to say what you do for work? Yeah. The job. Okay. Like reporter. Yeah. Like I imagine that involves a lot of like tight deadlines and, oh, yeah. and like scheduling and stuff that probably. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, I'm constantly under like some kind of deadline, like multiple deadlines throughout the day. So like I always, I've, I'm just so used to getting things done right like, on a certain like, you know, time frame. I never miss a deadline and just like plans. I don't miss plans. You know, right. like we said four o'clock. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. that's, that's what it is. Rolled up right at four. Not yeah. early. No. Thank God. Um, why? I, I don't like people who are early. That's yeah. not on time. Yeah, but also I do show up early to places. This one here, I just didn't. Like, you know. <laughs> no, but I literally live like three minutes away. No, okay. Well, okay. Okay. Within five minutes. Yeah, within five if you're minutes. 15 minutes early, that's too early. No, it's too I wouldn't do that. I don't want to spend that much time with you. But like I <laughs> I I yeah. definitely like if I get I if I get to a mic I'm there pretty early like tonight you are I'm always I'm usually I never show up I never like you know walk in at like unless I had something going I'll message Megan sometimes like at Foggy yeah. where I'm just like I'm sorry like you know I'm just wrapping up work or whatever and then she's like yeah that's totally yeah all cool. you have to do is let them know that's it and some people don't and I mean like certain shows like just don't start on time anyway so you can be a little looser with those yeah true but um yeah be on don't show up late don't and also don't show up like <laughs> just when you're about to go on it's oh like yeah someone in particular i'm thinking of i know exactly who you're thinking of <laughs> <laughs> okay next assumption before hey, i get myself in trouble there we go people might think that you're not good with kids but you are that is true that is true. That is another one. I mean, that's a pretty easy one to like. But you know. I added that first line because I feel like you might have the demeanor that people might assume. Oh, yeah. That you're not good with kids. Oh, people just assume I'm an asshole like through and through. And I put it out there on, on like, you know, my act or whatever. Like Ryan William one time told me that like uh, one of his friends like in the crowd uh, <laughs> said like, oh, yeah, no, like he's really funny, but he's such a fucking asshole. And I'm just like. Am I that bad? Like, I mean, like, I don't think, I mean, on stage, maybe I do put it out that way. Uh, but like, I don't think, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I'm not as bad as people okay, think. I can attest to this. Okay. okay. <laughs> I've never told you this. Uh, and I really should be taking screenshots and sending them to you because it's hilarious. Uh, no. Every now and then you and I will tag each other and shit, we'll shit on each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's mean, but it's playful mean because we're course. comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what we do. Oh, I see where this is. And I get all the time whenever I post things like that. Like, what was it? It was you correcting. Um, one of them was when I, when I made a typo in, in promoting a show yep. and you wrote me and you were like, you're, you're fucking it up already. Yeah. It's this, it's next weekend. Yeah, yeah. And I posted the screenshot just being like, Chris Lefts is a great colleague. Yeah. And like people would like, what? respond like how dare he <laughs> who is and like it's happened multiple times with multiple posts of people uh, be and then i just go no 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 no. that's it's maybe it doesn't pick up to strangers no. but it mostly doesn't pick up to non-comics like yep. they don't they don't get that that's yeah you the got, way we talk to each other is not normal 
No, it's not. I mean, like, I, I don't know. I just, I guess not. I just grew up like getting heckled by my brothers and like my dad. So like, I'm just so used to ball busting. So like, that's just yeah. the way. And that's most comics. Most. But most. like, how do you not pick up? <laughs> like, I'm talking to the people who responded. Hey, dumbasses. How do you not pick up that we're friends? And that's just, you think I would do that sincerely? No. I'm not. I wouldn't post something like that and then tag him in a stand-up picture, like yeah. in, the, in the same night. If yeah, we yeah. weren't, if we weren't friends. Yeah, like. exactly. You dumb fucks. <laughs> okay. It's the Chris Halef effect. <laughs> yes, but what was it's, it? Kids. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I am. So you are good with kids. I'm pretty good with kids. I have two nieces, two beautiful nieces. I love them to death. I knew you had two. Oh, two. the newer one that's fresher, right? Yeah, fr yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, or younger. You know, because that's usually the word that people use when they describe people fresher. that are younger. They're fresh yeah, and new. Oh yeah, he's fresher than you. Um, <laughs> yes, Leona, the older one, she's three. She's turning four later this year. Lavina turned two while she was here. Love them to death. I, I, I oh, adore. Two L names. Cute. Yeah, and they're cuties. Like I, I, I love spending time with them. I love, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fun uncle. I, I will yeah. say, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty fun uncle. But like with kids in general, like if I meet like a friend and they have kids or whatever, I'm pretty good with those kids. Like I right. know how to like, you know, play around. Like whoa, like you know here's yeah. a ghost like, oh, which is weird be okay so do you also enjoy this is a weird question Go ahead. <laughs> do you also enjoy talking to older people like elder like because you mentioned you not wanting to talk to like oh yeah adults I, I wonder if you're someone who's like really good with older people and really good with young I'm people pretty but good. not I am your pretty, fellow adult I'm pretty good with older people like when I it love comes to like people. yeah yeah because they always have something interesting to say yes. you know whether it's like you know w wise or racist like it's something that you're going to walk away from and be like that was an interesting interaction right there and, and most of the time yeah like you can learn from them and yeah I do enjoy I do enjoy talking to them. I'm pretty good with them. I know how to like because here's the thing, like a lot of people will talk to older people like their children. Like, hey, like are you okay or whatever? That's not but yeah. I like to talk to them like, you know, we're just like, you know, a couple of pals. And they yes. really do appreciate that. They I do. do. Talk to old people. Yeah. It's it's very important because the loneliness factor when you're probably older and your family's not around, I can't imagine. I really feel bad for that. I mean, do I I you're getting old all the yeah. time. That's why I like I try to stay healthy because I really want to stave it up. But like anytime I see an older person just like, you know, with their back yeah. hunched over, I'm like, that's all of us one day. I like know. we're all going to be that. Yeah. You know, so in it's, the meantime, just in, you know, make them feel comfortable, make them feel like happy. Like I do their love stories. Honestly, they, I, yeah, I do like hearing their stories. Uh, I wish they would fucking speed it up sometimes. <laughs> But for the most part, older people, they're they're okay in my book. Now, when it comes to like people who are on my age or whatever, I don't respect most people. Yeah, no, me too. And so, like, yeah. I don't like talking to a lot of people. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, they say that when you're pitching a business idea, you need to do it so it makes sense for like a five year old yeah. and a like eighty year old. Like, if if those two age groups can understand what your business is yeah. in a couple sentences, yep. then you've You've got it right. That is true. Yeah, you so don't want to. You don't want to overcomplicate it for them. I remember we learned that. I went to St. Mary's and I graduated with a business degree, and oh. they said something similar. It's like when you pitch something, make sure that everybody gets it. Yeah. No. Yeah. None of these words that like the average person wouldn't know. Oh yeah. You yeah. know, or these getting too words. inside baseball about things too. Synergy and uh, micromanaging. Like yeah, fuck off. Man. Yeah. Uh, let me see. And this kind of ties in. Uh huh. Uh. You do want to settle down eventually. Yes. Um, eventually. I don't know when. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty, like, here's the thing. I'm a pretty happy guy as is right now. I do enjoy my life. I will say spending a few weeks straight with my nieces, yeah. like as much as I love them, it is tough. I got to see firsthand how tough it was on my brother. And my mom was there. My, my sister-in-law, she went to Syria to visit family there. So she wasn't there with us. But, um, just to see how much work it is, I was like, oh my God, yeah. like that is, you gotta, you gotta really, you gotta be willing to do it. Like you have to put in the work to be a good parent. Like being a parent is a lot of work because you're okay. constantly saving your child's life. The amount of times mm. that my nieces would be <laughs> doing things that if I wasn't there, they would have died. Oh my God. Yeah, my, yeah. my little baby niece, like two, there's like a stairwell at my parents' place. And usually we have like this fence to like block just so she doesn't like, you know, go down the stairs because she doesn't know how to go down the stairs yet. Yeah. 
We forgot to do that. And she was literally charging towards it, running as fast as she can. And I had to like scoop her up. Oh, and God. she had no idea like yeah, yeah, how yeah. close she came to like at oh. least like really, really hurting herself. Oh God. And I'm like, man, you gotta be on it. Love it. I think people with anxiety would be great at that. Because we're always <laughs> we're always on on guard anyway. Yeah, but it would like I mean, that is such an added pressure and added anxiety to be a parent. Like, I mean, like you Love think it. what a fun project. I'm ex- I I want to do it. <laughs> Children are great. not projects. I would be great at it. I yeah. would be great. Oh God. <laughs> Here's how you know you're not ready to be a parent. When you refer to children as a project, <laughs> that's how you know. Oh yeah. Something always to do. No, it's just, <laughs> oh, dude, <laughs> I get it. I get it. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where I also like there's a, that also this other theory, which is like, you know, sometimes you think like, oh, I'm not ready to be a parent. But there's a lot of people who will say like, you know, when you have that child, it makes you ready. Like, yeah, I, mean, I don't think anyone's ever really ready. Nobody's ever really ready. But like also you want to be a good parent. There's so many yeah. bad parents out there. Yeah. So you want to be able to be around for your children. You want to be able to like, you know, show them what's right and wrong and like just steer them. Like right now, like, I mean, my brother's got two daughters. Uh, I, I fucking, I'm anxious for him when they get older. And part of the reason why is I watch Euphoria. And uh. the idea of them going through that shit right there is terrifying to me. And yeah, I know that that, but the thing about that show is there are aspects of that show, especially Zendaya's character, Rue, uh, the drugs and all that stuff. The one scene where Rue is freaking out about like not having her drugs or whatever. And like, you know, the intervention where like you, you've seen the show, right? Yes, yes, yes. Spoilers. That scene right there, like I had to turn it off because I've seen it. I've seen ah. that firsthand and I was like, this is so dead on. And right. I think it is definitely more prevalent now in schools because, you know, I have family, I have, you know, friends with kids who are going through it. And like, just you think whatever drugs or whatever issues like you had in high school, now multiply that by 10. It's an add in social media. Social media. It's so much oh, more. It's so, probably how? It's it's a whole new like I mean I I do eventually want to settle down, but god damn it it is terrifying. Would you be as worried if they are boys? Not as worried, no. Right? I obviously be worried because yeah. I don't want like you know my kids to be bullied in any sense or whatever. But yeah. when it's it's different when you have girls. It's just it's a different thing. It's a different thing. I just I I mean. I love them so much. Just the idea of them getting bullied terrifies me like any in any form. Although I will say this, my little baby niece is she's at risk of getting kicked out of kindergarten because she is the bully. I love she is a oh, little man. psychopath. Oh she bites kids. She like and I got to see it <laughs> with my when they would fight when they were over at my parents place. My my oldest niece, Leona, would like hit her for like taking one of her toys. She just like give her a look. And my little niece if you try to stop her, she will try to get past and she will not stop unless she can get one more back on Leona. She will not give up. Wow. She's a fighter. Wow. Like, fuck. She's, well, she's also been through some shit. I told you, right? No. She was born with her intestines outside of her Holy body. shit. Yeah. So she spent like the first couple months of her life in a hospital and she's been back periodically ever since. Oh, God damn. And, uh, I don't know how much of this I should say. I think it's something to be aware of. You know, I think my family would be fine with this, but she's a, she's a strong, she was forced to like go through some tough shit really just young. as a baby. And it kind of shows now as, as a toddler where she's just, she's kind of a mean bitch, you know what tough. I mean? Tough. In the best way possible. Mm. I love her for it, mm-hmm. but God damn it. She is close to getting kicked out of kindergarten. Apparently if she bites mm. a few more kids, then it's a problem. <laughs> so what a what a what a sentence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. One Where, more, what? it's fine. A few is more, she it's a problem. Fighting just to bite, or because oh, she's just fighting people. <laughs> like she'll like take their toys. I got to see it. Like anytime Leona would take one of her toys, uh, she would just scream out "mine," even though it wasn't her toy, and then bite or hit or whatever. She's just very aggressive. Mm, yeah. Okay. She's, she's badass. Uh okay. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna ask the question I want to ask. <laughs> what was the question? Well, when when was she born? 
we're not doing that. What? I was just curious if there was like a birthday season or month. April 24th, 2020. Oh, so she's a Taurus. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That doesn't really track. <laughs> it's almost oh, like- <laughs> shocker. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But in all fairness, Chris, you know that it, the sun sign isn't everything. We'd have to know. We'd have to know the sign. <laughs> oh, I know that. We, we'd have to know rising, moon. Her rising might be a Scorpio oh, or an God. Aries, if I could guess. It was funny. Trina James messaged me and uh, they said like something about like, because I'm doing that show at Good Robot next month. And it's their show and uh, asked me like, you know, to like fill out these forms, like very, like very stringent, like very, she, they're very organized. And they said at one point, I know type A Virgo energy or whatever. I'm like, how would I know that? Like, that's <laughs> something I'm not aware of. It's something I'm not interested in. You're just very organized. Great. And I do not tie that to star sign. Hey. All due respect, uh, believe in the astrology all you want. I don't know anything about it. I just, I found it funny that they assumed that I did know. Well, I, it's hot. It's hot right now, too. It is. It is. So maybe she assumed you were cooler than you are. Huh, yes, yes. Astrology is like Catholicism for women right now. It's just, it's become, it's become too much of a problem. I don't think so. Yeah. It's just getting to know somebody. It's just getting to know. It's just like personality quizzes or anything like that. Yeah. You know, like you ever do those personality quizzes? Yeah, but they don't ever line up with me. No? No. Like the Myers-Briggs? Oh, I've done do, it all. Wh- which one are you? Do you know? Do you I'm, remember your- I'm Myers. <laughs> do you know? I'm E-N- ENFP. So Oh, I e- did that. I mean, I did it because uh, somebody asked me to do it one time. I forget what I was. They had, like, it started with an E. So extrovert. So yeah, it's, it's definitely an extrovert or introvert. And then it's. By the way, I'm only and- kidding. Like, I don't think it's a problem. Like, <laughs> believe in what you want. Like, I come from a very. Like, here's the thing I come from an extremely religious family. So, like, you know, whatever makes you happy, believe in it. I don't That's know, it. man. I just. So, here's the thing with this is what I'll say. Good. If you put in, like, your actual birth time and. Like like the whole thing, get the mm-hmm. detailed chart, and you look into things like aspects and planets, and like all like it's not just your sun sign or whatever. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There are some very um interesting, like it's very. It, in my case, when I read it, it's very accurate. It's scary. That's cool. I mean, like, look, I'm sure, I'm sure it is. I know Emma yeah. did one for me one time, and I was like, okay, that's kind of accurate. But like, right? But but I mean, that's it, right? That's a, that like, but it's you just a, go. That's cool. No, I, I just go, okay, now what? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you just go on and live your life. Oh, and you shouldn't like live your life through horoscopes. Well, Don't get me wrong. I, I think it's just a cool thing to understand yeah. yourself better, but also understand like if you're someone who's like, oh, I happen to be like friends with a lot of this sign. Oh, interesting. Why is that? You know what I mean? It's just that kind of thing. Yeah, I guess. Um, I don't know. I'm friends with so many different types of people that I don't think it like it re- like there's I have so many groups of friends who cannot meet other groups of friends I have. Right. Because if they did, it would be a problem because their beliefs or their like opinions Uh don't align. I'm just kind of like, I'm just cool with most people. Like I was like that in high school too, where I was Uh like a me, my friend Liam, my friend Anthony, we were just, everybody liked us, but we weren't like with any group. We weren't jocks. We weren't preps. We weren't, uh, the, we used to call them pit rats. Because they used to call hang them out. what pit rats, you know the people who did pit- drugs and stuff like that. Oh, we called. Oh, what do we call them? We call them pit rats because there was they hung out in a place we called the they called the pit. Was it like a mudroom? No, no, thing? no. It was just like off like oh. the school campus. That's where they smoke cigarettes, smoke yeah. pot. And every every coke, high school has that area, eh? Yeah, and yeah. for them it was called the pit. So then everybody was just like, oh, it's a pit rat, you know. Like, I think ours was like a mud, called mudroom or something like. I think we called them greasers. Oh well, I mean that's isn't that the outsiders? That's that book, yeah. The Outsiders. Oh, maybe. Oh, greasers, you don't know the, yeah. greasers or druggies, maybe. Well, the or, greasers and the outsiders. Gre- that was like you know. Yes. Uh, they used to slick their hair back with leather jackets. Yeah. And like, and get in, like knife fights with kids <laughs> in a parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that wasn't really. It's that probably wasn't not really accurate. that. We just called them that for for some reason. Still, I think no one else I'd rather hang out with than those people. <laughs> No, I get I it. Like, like I, I, I love hanging out with so many different types of people. I love hearing everybody's perspective, whether it's right or wrong. It's fun. Oh my god. There you go. Yeah, no, it's cool. Like I have friends who are super progressive, like, and then I have friends who are ultra conservative, and I'm just like, 
because it, it's funny because like I always think I'm progressive until I'm around my progressive friends. And then I think I'm conservative until I'm around my conservative friends. Like, you know, because they want the extremes. Use. Oh, my God. Yeah. But I'm I'm cool with most people. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I like, like I feel like there's only really two things that I I feel like like I couldn't date someone who didn't believe in pro-choice for abortion. Yeah, that's big. Um, and as long as they were cool with LGBTQ people and like all of that, you know, like those are the two, I, I would say like the two main ones that like, yeah, I feel like I couldn't be with someone with those. But if they were like, if they were conservative in every other way, I don't think I would mind. So it is funny. Much. I've never met anybody, whether it was conservative or liberal here in Nova Scotia, it's, it's to clarify, cause it's a different game here who is anti LG. Like everybody is always, yeah. they always qualify. Like I am, I'm, I'm for it. I, there's nothing wrong with it. But then everything else about them is super conservative. Right. Yeah. So like there's certain things where it's like, yeah, pro choice or, you know, pro LGBTQ rights or yeah. um, equality, like all of that. Like, yeah, so, it's well, we have this view of what can being conservative is and there's nuance and you're not always 100 percent one thing, you know, Well, 100 percent. No, I mean, yeah. you shouldn't be. You I shouldn't think be. you shouldn't be 100 uh, percent of anything. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you take you pick and choose like what works for you. But like yeah. this idea that uh, any of us believes that we have the answers to all, you know, like the issues yeah. that we read about or whatever. Fuck right off. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to common sense shit. Mm -hmm. Like abortion, mm -hmm. like like two uh, S LGBTQIA rights, like you have to, you know. Yeah, I think that that's common sense. Where it's just like, yeah, you know, like help these people out. Like anti. What the fuck am I doing right now? Like I am just like <laughs> just saying the most. I can hear Travis right now just going, Egh. you know, it's gonna message me about this. I get it. I know. You know what, dude? You're right. I sounded like a blithering idiot. I'm going for woos, not laughs, right oh now. That's God. what I'm doing. Well, my friend Geneva, like I was on her podcast recently, and she brought up like an "I am am I the asshole?" question, which was like this guy like this girl had a certain viewpoint that she didn't want to continue talking to him after she found out that he had this viewpoint. What's the viewpoint? Though? I can't. Well, that was the thing that it didn't say. Right. Okay. But it was just the idea of like, you know, if you, if you're on Tinder or something and you yeah. see someone's conservative and you're like, Oh no, no, no. Conservatives. Yeah. 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 See, if you, you know, yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of like, just, I mean, What's Meet the, the person, talk to them, yeah. find out their values. And there's a lot of up. there's a lot of conservatives. There's a lot of religious people. There's a lot of people like in that camp who are for a lot of the values that, you know, you may be for. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, like, it's just about having discussions with people. Yes, that's right. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. We talked about this on the last episode with the LV podcast, guys. Hey. We got to talk. We got to talk about it. That's what it that's uh, what be say. Uh, <laughs> next assumption. We already kind of hit on this. But I, I guess this isn't just your flirting style, but it would be just your style overall is roasting. Uh, do you, when you flirt, do you roast girls that you're in, into? Pick on them? Yes. Yeah. But I mixed, like, here's the difference is like, I will roast, I will pick on them, but then I'll also throw in a little bit of like, you know, uh, you know, I'm only kidding, right? And I'll like give them eyes and I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I feel violated. <laughs> Not you, you dumb fuck. I'm talking about anybody else. Oh my God. But that's what it is. I, I just think that's so cute that you have to confirm. Well, I mean, I guess with comics, you wouldn't have to do the, you know, you know, I'm kidding. No, for but people. with like a normie woman. Yeah. 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 Probably good to reassure that you're uh, not yeah, fucking I have to. Her. I have to. Like, there's always like a moment of like, just so you know, I'm, I'm fucking. Do and women it, pick. <sighs> and they'll give it right back. I mean, like, oh you know, most God. of the most of the women I've I've dated or I've been with or whatever, they're pretty they're they're great sports is the way I would. put mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't date them otherwise. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's a good litmus test. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 To I mean, see if someone could get down with just you overall. Oh, dude, like just uh, fucking. I mean, just I can think of like so many of them who I still talk to to this day who literally it's just like they'll message me and talk about something stupid I said and it's just like all in good fun and I'm just like I like that that's great that's the way it should be yeah yeah no, I like that okay um oh oh okay so I I feel like you are someone who when you meet a woman you know right away mm. whether it's friend zone or potential dating 
you know, right away. Mm. You can friend zone someone right away. Because you're quick to drop the buddy. <laughs> that is fun. That is one of my favorite things. Like, I mean, shout out to my ex who you know, by the way. But like, as soon as we were done dating, like how quickly she started calling me buddy. I was just like, I know what you're doing. Like, you know, we can just, you can just call me Chris. You know, we're still friends, you know? But it's a, it's, it's a, a very great way. Oh, I get it. I when get it. When a guy says buddy, it's done for you. Girl. Oh, yeah. Or Move bro- on. Bro- oh, yeah. I'm more likely to like date somebody who I call brother than buddy. You know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> so weird. I know. Um, do you know right away or c- could you meet, could you have a friend that you then go, oh, maybe I could be like, could attraction grow? It's tough for me because like I here's my I mean, like this is kind of the what's wrong with me, I guess, part of it. Like we can wait to get to that. But I just I see the end of things quickly. Uh, So there's some people. Yeah. Sometimes you'll meet somebody and you'll be like, I'm not interested. And like, that's just it. like, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not that like I mean, yeah, I guess I do know pretty quickly. Um, But even if there is like a seed of potential. Yeah, it's just they last a little bit longer. But then eventually my issues get in the way of me committing to anybody you know what i mean so mm-hmm. i guess we'll yeah sometimes it's just like when you meet somebody and you can vibe with them and you're like right away you're like okay yeah maybe and then other times it's just like yeah i'd like to see where this goes but for me the way i operate which is probably not great i have problems committing to people in any right sense in any sense some people I'll just commit to a little bit longer than others if that makes any sense yes yeah Oh dear. Um, <laughs> uh, my last assumption is that you sh- <laughs> you use Snapchat. I don't know if you do or not, but you seem like you would. No. What? No. I mean, I have it on my phone. You but don't like, use it? No. I mean, I have it on my phone, but like people will m- snap me, and I'm like, why do I still have this app? Like I like I I I never like the app. I hate the app, and I'm just it's like awful. it's just terrible. But like I have some friends on there, and I'm just like yeah, you know, I'll see what they're up to. But like but, I don't message them. I don't ever send anybody anything. I'll like click on like a snap story. Okay, that's what they're doing. Cool, and I move on with my life. But I've never been one to snap somebody. Okay, I'm not a child. Okay. Yeah. That was just a shallow assumption based on what you look like. You look like a, <laughs> you look like a Snapchat bro. Oh god. You look like a guy that would like. Like yeah. put in put in his Tinder. Follow me on Snapchat. Oh, uh, Chris Aleph sixty nine. Jesus Christ! I like how you think there's sixty eight other people named Chris Aleph there. Um, <laughs> no, I definitely don't do that. I don't like the app. I'm not. Uh, I, a lot of it's, people will think I, a lot of people think I'm a bro, but my lifestyle and the way I operate is so unbro like. Like I don't. Uh, you said you worked out twice and went and played basketball. I do that for my health, mm. but like I don't drink. I don't. Oh, yeah. I don't try to fuck women. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go out like Hopefully that. Not with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Saying it like that. Hey, what's up, ladies? Want to go for a walk in the woods with me? No, I um, I don't do a lot of things that like yeah. When it comes to like health stuff yeah i'll do that but like i don't drink i don't like go out to try to pick up women i'm barely active on dating apps i don't message people right like i'm very much like uh i'm kind of like a hermit in that way the only times you see me out is when i do my stand-up and then i go home yeah yeah that's way to be yeah honestly it's a fucking way to be oh you said something that triggered something i fucking what did you just say uh, I oh, the the not drinking thing. Can yeah. I add, like I don't think I've ever asked you why. Is it just that you don't enjoy it, or is there a deeper reason? Uh, there's. Uh, I think there's both. I think uh, I don't genuinely don't enjoy it that much. I yeah. mean, to me, it's not that I don't. En- it's just that I don't find it necessary yes. to be right. out with friends and need to. I can have a good time without it. Yeah. But also, like there have been people in my life who uh, had substance abuse issues, uh, and so. For me, that's why I don't do, I've never done drugs. Yeah. And uh, for me, I just, it's almost like, how can I go out and party and drink and get drunk and all that stuff, knowing that they struggled so hard with it? People who I love deeply. Mm. And for me, that's just kind of a big reason why I don't. I Mm. think their struggles tainted it for me. Not that Mm. I would have struggles with it, but it's more so like a, you know what, if you're not going to do it, I won't do it either. That type of thing. Well, when you see someone become the worst 
version of themselves because of these things, yeah. you're like, that doesn't seem good. And it definitely does make you think of the substance differently. Yeah. Like oh. when, when you when you witness it firsthand. It definitely does. I've seen some ugly, ugly shit. Uh, and uh, stuff that I wouldn't wish anybody to see. Um, yeah, it's just some people can handle it. Well, I mean, like most of the comics in this scene drink, and they're fine. Like, they're fun. They're fun drunks. But I've seen the other side where it's just like, this is an issue. And oh, yeah. I've seen this is bad, and not only are you hurting yourself, you're hurting other people. And for me, yeah. I just, I saw that, and I was just like, Okay, I'm good. Not that I was a partier to begin with. I used to drink a lot more when I was in college and shit. But I kind of grew to the point where I was just like, you know what? I'd never enjoyed it that much. And seeing these people go through what they went through, I was just like, you know what? I don't need to do it. Cut, I'll have a drink this. every now and again. I'll have like a beer. Yeah. Yeah. You're like a one or two. One or two on like a special yeah. occasion yeah. type of thing. And I'm fine with that. But like, I'm not a person who's like, I have to have a beer every time I go out. I, no. I'm not. I have a full, like two full cases of beer at my place, but that's only for and unopened for like months. And that's only for like hosting or entertaining people. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. You have you have it for when someone comes over and you want a beer, which is a good sign that I, I I'm hosting plenty of people when I don't open any of them. <laughs> like, there's well, maybe no they just don't want a beer. Yeah, that's true. There's that too. I mean, there's I have Crown Royal as well, but that's only if my dad ever comes over, which he would never come over. <laughs> that's nice though. I, not, not as a bad thing. My dad just doesn't leave the house. That's just. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, way to be. <laughs> way to be. Yeah, but that's like, that's why I don't really drink that much. I know that's some fair. people. Some people will ask me and they'll think like, did, "Does Chris like? Did he have like some kind of substance abuse?" Like, no, I never did. But I I knew people who did, and for me, that's the reason why I don't do it. Yeah, it's interesting. Because oh, sadly, I think Halifax and comedy, those two things combined, oh, it's just yeah. a huge part of the culture, unfortunately. Super. Like, I mean, like, God damn it. Like, fucking the amount of times, I, like, every one, all my friends, every single one of them, everybody I'm close with in this scene, everybody who's I'm not close with, they're always like, there's a beer or a drink in hand. And I'm like, fuck, we're out here pretty often. Like, how, like, or like, like plans to hang out or do you want to get a drink? Yeah. It, like that's what we go to so quickly. That might be another time I get a drink is if I'm like on a date with somebody and I'm like, and I, and I actually let them know ahead of time. I'm just like, just so you know, I don't drink that much. So like I might have like one or two and that's it. And right. like, yeah, cool. Like they're always cool with it. I, though there have been situations where people be like, what, why? Like I'm going to drink. And I'm just like, well, I'm not going to stick around. Like, I mean, you can drink if you want, but I'm not going to watch yeah. you get drunk. That just be weird. Yeah. yeah. Don't want to do that. Hey, uh, don't drink. Don't drink at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say undrive. It's not a drinking podcast, by the way. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. It's that funny. Was a um, uh, fucking, so Dan and Travis are, I'm producing one of the, like, they have a new podcast. Oh, yeah. I saw the Instagram story of Travis walking to your place, holding, like, a case of whatever with the saddest look on his face. And just like, <laughs> just what the fuck am I doing with my life? Oh, uh, yeah. I slid them a, 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 a note as they were recording, being like, your first sponsor is intoxicated, so give me a plug. <laughs> and I had them both plug me. Dan did a great job because Dan's hosted the show before. Yes. Uh, and, uh... Travis was just like, <laughs> like, listen to Intoxicated for white woman bullshit. And uh, I don't think she's drank in a hundred episodes. <laughs> and I was like, that's so true. It really isn't a drinking podcast. I mean, sometimes, but like, it's not, it's certainly not a drunk podcast anymore. No, no. It's been I mean, a while only since those I've been live streams or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's when it would get like really <laughs> Man, the, the, the pandemic made me not. It just, I was just like, I just didn't drink. And yeah. then, and then ever since then, it's like three drinks and I'm drunk. Really? Three. Yeah. I guess it lowers your tolerance or whatever. That three makes is sense. the magic number. That is true. I mean, like I, I, I had like a couple of beer at the second night of the showcase, just two. And I remember like feeling like, Ooh, like, wow, yeah, that's like, Ooh, they're hit. Hard. Yeah. They're hard. Well, you're also getting older too. How old are you? 32. 32. You aren't getting older. Uh, yeah. Well, well, we all are. It <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. We're going to do the rant hey, segment. Okay. Time for the rant. Rant. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember my own rant segment music. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's something like that. Something heavy heading. Rant. We're, I don't know how long. I, I'm, oh, I, it won't be too long. Actually, before we get to the rant, yes. did, you, did you have an assumption about me? Oh, easy assumption about you. If you ever start dating somebody, we are never going to see you again. That is my assumption <laughs> about you. 
You are the type of person that if you find somebody, you're, we're going to be like, where's Sarah? She's like, I'm with my boyfriend. That's what I'm um, Okay. Yeah. Let me just say. Uh, is that true? In all fairness, it's been 10 fucking years, <laughs> you fucks. But I'm right, though. I'm right, right? It's been 10 years. Fuck yeah. If I start dating someone, this podcast is done. Comedy's probably done. <laughs> I'm making it for lost time. I haven't been in a relationship in 10 Five, like, do you realize how long 10 years is? I know I say it, I hit it home a lot. 10 years is a long time. A decade of being Damn, alone. Dude. Jesus, like, dude. I'm, yeah, I'm either meant to be alone, which I've kind no, of accepted. No, no. I've kind of accepted that. Um, I, and I also just don't have time with all, all the things I do. But, um, but also it's like, yeah, if, yeah, we're doing a hard launch, there's no soft launches. I'm not doing a soft launch. I'm all about the hard launch. You're like me in this sense. I think with you, as soon as something like, cause the amount of times I'll hear you like, I want to date with somebody or whatever, or like fuck the guys who are like talk to you for nine months and then they just don't see you. That's different. But I'm talking about like, but like you'll like go on a date and you'll immediately, I think this kind of goes back to the question you had from me, which was like, how, like do you friend zone somebody immediately mm -hmm. or do you try? And I feel like you're kind of similar in that, like immediately you'll start making up excuses, not excuses, but like reasons. No, I don't want to pursue this or it might interfere with this or uh, he said that or like, you know, type of deal. Oh, like, overthinking all the a time. Self yeah, yeah, yeah. A self-sabotage. That's what yeah. I do. I self-sabotage. The, the, the crushes and like interests that I've had in my life that have been legit like, oh, I really like this person yeah. or I'm in love with this person. Like I've been in love with many people I haven't dated. Mm. <laughs> um, It's been friends or like people like that I... I, I got to know naturally, okay. I guess. The dating situation is just strange because you're like, I, I just think it's it's just easier to make excuses when you don't know someone and they're like auditioning. Yeah. They're like auditioning to be your um, partner. But you're also <laughs> auditioning for them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a two way. It's a very, it's like, it's like, uh, it's almost like trying to solve a puzzle while the puzzle is trying to solve you. Yes. And right now, like, I, my issue is, I mean, do you want to do the what's wrong with me right Should now? Should we do let's, that first? Let's, let's do, it first. do that right now. Okay. okay. Chris, what's wrong with you? I will see the end of things before they happen. So mm. like, it's kind of like- He's when psychic, you, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yes, oh, fucking tarot cards. Oh, <laughs> I'm white. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what it is, is like, it's like when you watch a movie and you already kind of know where it's going. And then it, like, I lose interest. Like, I'm kind of like that where I'm just like, oh, okay, I see where this is going. Or, oh, if I see somebody doing a joke and I can see the ending already, it kind of ruins it for me. But I'm, you're like that with dates and people? I'm like that with dates. So like, sometimes I'll like start seeing somebody and I'm like, oh, I think I like them. And then like in my head, I'll be like, all right, well, what if we start dating? Oh, what if I have to meet their friends? Oh, what if like they have to meet my friends? Eventually, like, you know, we start like picking it up and maybe they want to spend more time move in together, eventually meet each other's parents. And then like eventually it ends because I'm just not there enough. What if they're not into me doing stand up? And eventually I start to grow apart. We grow apart and it ends poorly. And I do that. Like I'll, I'll run through all of that in my head, like in like uh, in any scenario where I'm dating somebody. How early and sometimes like, cause like you, you have like the blinders on like mm. not blinders, but like you have like the, the honeymoon phase with somebody when you mm. start dating somebody, I'm like, I'm having a great time with this person. But then once that starts to dissipate, that's when it starts to come out. Now with other people, I see it sooner, but then like there's been people I've dated where I will start to like, once th the whole like, Oh, lovey dovey bullshit, whatever ends. Then I'm like, oh, fuck, what it's do brass I do now? talks. I think, where are we going to be eight, year, eight months from now? Oh my God. Like, what if yeah. they like me more than I like them? Like, that's well, a big over, fear. But do you talk to them about these concerns? Yeah, a little by little. I mean, uh, the, the I mean, my pat, like the, um, me and uh, uh, my ex, who you know, uh, we talked a lot about that, especially towards the end. And I think she saw it coming. I saw it coming. We weren't surprised when it happened. Obviously, it sucked when it happened. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, like, I I expressed concerns. I know she expressed concerns as well. And then, like, eventually it just wasn't a right fit. And fucking, by the way, shout out to her and shout out to her partner. She is fucking, like, like right now her life mm -hmm. is great. And I could not be happier for her. I think she's great she's still one of my good friends good job mm -hmm. yeah um but um that's just the way it was with me like i 
I see the end of things and then I self-sabotage. So that's what it is. Like I play through all of that stuff. And that's the reason why like it's tough for me to hold down anything. Like I try to see like how yeah. they can fit into my life when really oh, yeah. it should be a little bit of con- like every relationship you should have some compromise. Yeah. As long as you're not compromising well, happiness, like just make time for each other in the beginning. Sure. But eventually it got to points with relationships where like anytime I dated someone, you're like, well, I'd like to see you more often. I'm like, I don't know if I can. And then boom. That's what well, happens. that's why I think it's so important to be super honest right away about your like about your lifestyle. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm like, I'm like that, especially with like some like comedy and you're also working like that's like probably one of your non-negotiables like. Yeah. You know, like, oh, yeah. you, you know, maybe it's a matter of like you, you do a little less mics. You still do mics, but maybe you plan them ahead and maybe it's just a <laughs> just just hear me out. No, 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 no. OK, go ahead, go ahead. Just hear me out, Aquarius. Like maybe your oh, compromise. <laughs> maybe your compromise is just like. Realizing that there's value and maybe messing a Gus's show oh to God, like yeah. hang out with somebody. Yeah, and like honestly, like, oh, yeah, especially the longer you do it, because you can kind of like, if I really have something I want to work on, then yeah, I'm gonna do a mic. But sometimes I would just go up just to go up, and that was on me. Um, right. And yeah, but you know what it is? It's not even so much the mics. It was more like my the other facet of my job is I'm also a producer for uh, the Halifax Mooseheads, and right. From September up until just like, you know, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, the amount of times they would play, it would like between that and comedy, my nights were gone. Yeah. So trying to see anybody would be a problem. You know what it is? I think you got to find, I think you got to go for Mm -hmm. a fellow workaholic. You got to find someone who's also doing a lot. Well, that's what it is. They would understand it. And if you find if you find someone who can also do the let's see each other once a week, yeah, and that's fine. We'll just have good communication in between those times, whether that's like texting or phone calls or whatever. Well, that uh, the people I've dated have been like that. Everybody like I don't like dependent people. No, I don't like. But like every person I've dated, like in the last few years, has been super independent. So that was. Never, but here's the thing. No, yeah. like. The longer you date somebody, eventually that whole once a week thing will get to somebody. So it'll be like, well, like I'd like to see it more than once. Which fair, right. that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. And that's another issue with me is just the inability to like compromise, which Would- I will eventually work on. But in the <laughs> that doesn't sound good. I will eventually better myself. But in the meantime, we like I'm not gonna. <laughs> you're still young. Yeah, I yeah, know. I'm the youngest comic in the scene. I'm the youngest comic in the scene. No, you're not. 32. No, you're not. I'm so young. Yeah, I don't know. I um, It's something I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, the only way I can work on it is by actually starting to see somebody and work on it that way. You know what I mean? But like, it is something that, yeah, eventually if I want to settle down or if I want to see somebody, I have to like be able to accommodate. Do you ever wonder if you, you're capable of liking someone so much to change? <laughs> what a question that, uh, no and I asked because like I find it very hard to be attracted to anybody right now like I I just I truly am just like nothing there's nothing nothing um and I often wonder like about stuff like that like maybe it's just like you haven't met someone who you really really like so much well there's been a couple of people since my relationship that I've seen and like it was a casual thing with these people I'm thinking of, but like, and I really like them. Um, and to be honest with you, had it can like, it's one of those things where it's like I really like them, but yeah, like I don't know if I have it in me. Yeah, at least right now, I think it's just the place I'm at in my life right now. Well, you're doing I'm, so much. Yeah, and I'm I'm pretty I'm happy. I'm happy as is. If I okay. was miserable. Then yeah, for sure. I probably, but right now, like I'm actually pretty content with the way my life is. Like I'm fine being single. I, I felt yeah. And I'm not like when I say I'm single, I'm not like out there just you know, oh, chicks. Like I'm not yeah. like that. I've never been that guy. Yeah. 
I used to be that guy, but uh, maybe yeah. maybe a few years ago I was. Now but you're right now to I'm, lady comedy. That's right now, uh, lady comedy. Oh, she's God. a needy. She's a needy wench. That one. <laughs> Um, always demanding your time. That's exactly it. I don't know. I uh, I think eventually, yeah. But right now, if I'm pretty happy as is, if mm-hmm. I meet somebody, obviously that could change. People always say that. It's like, oh, you never know. Like, you know, you might meet somebody. I'm like, yeah, sure. But right now, mm-hmm. I'm not. It's not high on my priority list. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does that make sense? But, and there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, for sure. I I I just say like, don't do things half assed. So if it's not high on your priority list, don't bother going on dates. If you know, yeah. if you know you don't have it in you right now, I just deleted my apps. I was just like, I, there's no way. <laughs> I texted with a guy for a full year about yeah. getting a drink that never happened. Yeah, so, that, that, that's, yeah, that shouldn't have been. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's like if you focus on other things uh, and they say, you know, wink, wink, if you don't want it, it'll come around. Um, oh, you should write a bit about that. <laughs> I'll come around. Is there anything else wrong with you? I would say, I mean, like that's the stuff that I thought. I'm sure there's plenty wrong with me, but that's the stuff that comes to mind right now. That's probably like the commitment. Anybody who knows me would be like, that's the first thing right there. Commitment. Mm. Yeah, 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 commitment, seeing things, uh, seeing the ending to things before they even happen. Endings that might not have even happened, by the way. Worst case scenario, thinker. I'd say that's a little probably bit. it. Yeah, I'm a little bit like that. Yeah, that probably makes sense. Yeah. Do, are you someone who, do you think you have anxiety? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely have anxiety. Like, I get anxious. I, I'm an overthinker. I, um, like, if I, what was it today? Not today. But, like, with COVID in particular, COVID-19, uh-huh. like especially early on in the pandemic, anytime, I feel like we all experienced this, but anytime I had a sniffle or a yeah. headache or something, I would overthink it. I'd be like, this is terrible. Like how many people have I seen? Like this right. is going to be bad. Like I don't want to give it to anybody. Like, you know, I don't want to get it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think COVID maybe made me more anxious before COVID-19, maybe not as much, but now I'm definitely a little bit more anxious. More anxious. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you're, you're, you don't have social anxiety. It's more, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't have social anxiety. I don't like talking to people. Like I do come off. Here's the thing. I know that some people at Mike's <laughs> think I'm a dick. Because I don't talk to them, but it's not because I have anything other than the fact that I'm just, I like to talk to the people I know. And yeah, I don't, I don't like, it's not that I don't like talking to people. Chris doesn't want to talk to you. (laughs) (laughs) It's not that I don't want to talk to you. It's just that like, I'm, (laughs) I'm awkward. Like a lot of the comics. So like, sometimes I'm just like, I, I don't really feel like getting to know somebody right now. Let me just talk to my friends right now. And plus like, you know, if I'm about to get up at a mic. It's a lot of energy doing yeah. comedy. So like we only have so much that we can actually take in. Yeah. You know, like there's a lot of like I, I'm all about this is a weird thing to say, but like consent for conversation. Oh uh, yeah. Like I'm just not a fan of people who just start dumping on you. Oh God. Like like without actually checking if you have the space to hear it. Yeah, I didn't um, consent to this. Like what yeah. yeah, like no, 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 stop, stop, stop. I am not consenting that. No means no. Like for real. Like that is a real thing where it's just like, I don't want to hear what you have to say right now. I don't I'm not obligated to talk to you. And it's not that like, you know, I don't like it's just that right now I'm like, I don't need I don't need this right now. Yeah. I just wanna like, you know, I wanna do my second. And get that's out. and that's where social cues and being self aware comes into play of like you just you gotta be aware of when people do or do not want to talk. Which so many people that I know, both in comedy and outside of comedy, there's a lot of people who are so unaware Mm -hmm. of the way they come off, Mm -hmm. what they do, and how they make people feel. And I'm just like... I would rather be seen as like an overthinker or overanalyzer than someone who's like just doing things and not being aware of them. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And I feel like we... I feel like anybody listening to this podcast could be like, oh, I can think of a few people in this scene. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I... uh, What the fuck were we talking about? Self-awareness. Ah, self-awareness. Yeah. No, I... uh, Yeah, and a lot lot of people in this scene need to quit. (laughs) Holy shit. I'm kidding, oh kidding, God. kidding, but also. Well, I mean, not. there, um, I don't know how, I don't know if there's a balance between being critical and also trying to be 
pause. Like it's of course, it's, it's, it's you this need weird to. it's this weird fine line because I don't necessarily think comics should like just be constantly being like I want to kill myself. I'm a piece of shit. I suck. No, definitely not. Um, because that's a very unhealthy. I mindset. feel like Travis and I were we were talking about this with you last time we were on. But yeah, like it, fucking the James Mullinger thing. Yeah, give yourself a win, dude. That's great. Give yourself a you pat on the back. This is very sad, but I didn't take any of I. I'm happy with how I did. Yeah. I didn't take in any of it. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it. I didn't actually feel like people were complimenting me. And I didn't, I didn't feel it at all. I was totally numb. And that might've been, that might've been exhaustion. Do you do that? Do you feel like you're like that because you're afraid of how it might be perceived if you take the compliment? Because sometimes like, you know. No, it was just such a fucking blur. Okay. And well, take like it's good. It's I, a good thing. And I no, not that, but like you did good. Be proud of yourself. I mean, I I think I had fun on stage and I was present on stage, yeah. which I'm not always. Um, and I was proud of that. But I think it's just because I don't like my material. I think I literally think that's it. I think it's because the stuff that I did, I was like, I don't like these jokes anymore. I'm just I'm doing them because it's the act. Well, yeah, I mean, like you're you building, know? you're you're building, you're building, you're building an act. You're building jokes one by one. But yeah, like of course, like eventually, we all go through that where we're like, I'm kind of tired of these jokes. But like, yeah. when you're getting paid, you're getting uh, paid to do like a pro show, especially at Yucks. You yeah. give, you go up there, do yeah. what works. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, like w- as soon as you have a catalog where you can like flip through a bunch of shit. Yeah, great. But like in the meantime, go up there if you want to hate your material. That's fine, but. If it's getting laughs and you did good, give yourself a pat on the back. Of course, you want to be crit- listen back to your set. Like, I could have done that better. Of course. But there are times that I feel like all of us need to, like, take stock and be like, take you credit. know what? We did, we did all right there, you know? Yeah. We did good. Now, there are some people, like, I think we talked about this last time, who have deaf ears and don't hear the silence after their alleged jokes. Yeah. And then there's the whole other end of things where you give yourself too much credit. Yes. So I think yeah. there is definitely a balance there. But, like, take the wins because it's Halifax comedy. They're few and far in between. So, like, if you have a good moment, if you have, like, you know, a good show and you did great on it, you know, give yourself a pat on the back. For real. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, you know. Mm-hmm. Don't. It's, it's a tough thing to do, everybody. And uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just think it's. I just think it's. It's. Yeah, it's. A, it's. It's weird when you get compliments and they just don't. You don't believe them at all. Like, yeah. don't, not even. Not even a little bit believe. You're just like this person's just saying this to make me feel good, to be encouraging. Well, there's certain people that will you'll you might get a compliment from who will compliment everybody. everybody. But then there's certain other people who, if you get a compliment from them, take that compliment because they, they probably mean it, especially somebody who you respect deeply. Gassing up is a thing. Gassing people up just to gas them up. Yeah. Is for sure a thing. And I said it to, I mean, uh, I mentioned it to John, like when I did red room, the first time I did red room, I was, he put me on last. Um, and brought me up as one of the funniest comedians <laughs> in Halifax. And I wanted to throw up, quite I frankly. I, I, I just, I bless his soul. Because because you know it's coming from like such a sweet place. Of course. And I did get that fucking Coast nomination, which like so <laughs> many, so many people like, so many people were just like, oh my God, yes, Sarah. And I was just like, you guys, one or two people probably nominated me. And I got nominated like... By default, because of the system, like it had, it wasn't a real thing. The coast nominations, they don't mean anything. They don't they really mean, don't. but like, but, but like, some people don't get that. I mean, like, and let they them, gas you up. True, let them not get it though. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, Travis. Realistically, I know I keep bringing him up, and it's true. Like, the guy is the best in the Maritimes. He's one of the best in the country. He should win that award every single year. And I don't think what did he get third this year. He, yeah. He got beaten out by improv and then somebody oh, else. Oh, Alicia McCarville. Yeah. Like two, like eight people, nine people who aren't real comedians yeah. or stand ups, I should say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it yeah. doesn't mean anything. So don't worry about that. Yeah. I just think, yeah, be, be careful with gassing people up. Be careful with being overly complimentary. Um, I'm a big fan of the keep working, keep at it. 
Like, yeah. like, like that's a really great thing to say to somebody. Cause yeah. you're like, you got something, keep going. Yeah. But you're the best. You're the funniest, <laughs> you know, like, like yeah. let's avoid uh, well, you, you, words that end with S. Yeah. Well, I mean like you gotta, yeah, you gotta <laughs> weed out certain people's compliments over others. But like, if you get that's it from true. like somebody like, like a Dan oh, or yeah, like yeah, Claire yeah. That or somebody like, like that. that, feels like great. Yeah. They're, uh, that goes a long way. Yeah. So definitely, you know, take like, and I know I'm hard on myself after sets too, but yeah. Oh. If I get a compliment or if I get like somebody like, hey, that joke right there is good, like from like somebody I truly respect, I'm like, okay, I'm onto something. And yeah, because pros much. don't compliment everybody. No, no, nor should they. Yeah, and, yeah. They, and they really, really, really shouldn't. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. What's next? Uh, rant. We didn't do rant, so we skipped over the rant. Okay. So we're going to go into what's bugging you, what's pissing you off, what is your rant? Okay. Uh, I feel like I've said this before, and this is something I think you and I agree on. A lot of us agree on it. Anybody? Woos <laughs> are not laughs. Look at me. Look at me in this camera right now. <laughs> Anybody who goes up there and says some pandering ass bullshit without a joke at the end of it and gets woos and thinks like, that's a new bit. No, it isn't. Okay. It's easy shit. Okay. If you want to write something that has a certain political point or some kind of message behind it. Great. But laughs. Funny. It has to be funny. That comes first. Okay. It. After the fact, it was like, oh, wow, there was actually like a point to that. Great. But the priority should be funny. I have that bit about BIPOC, how much I hate that term. And it started off as just my true feeling of how much I hate that term. But I never thought to bring it to stage because I was like, I don't have a joke behind this. I don't have anything funny to say about it. And then little by little, I started to realize, oh, I can make something funny about it. But that's the only reason why I brought it to stage, because I yeah. build it up to a point where, oh, there's laughs to it and it ends on a silly note. It's two and a half minutes and it has a point behind it. But for me, the priority was always be funny first. If you get a woo, fucking turn write it into a, a laugh. Turn it into a laugh. If Oh my oh. God, I hate fucking woo so much. <laughs> Even in my own sets. I'm going like, to woo you next time I watch. <laughs> even in my own sets, when they woo a setup, shut up, okay? Mm. I put up a clip of me doing one of my jokes. I forget which one it was. It was at Foggy Goggle. And literally throughout the clip, I'm probably, I don't know if I've deleted it. I feel like I have. Maybe I haven't. People are wooing throughout it, like everything I'm saying. And I just, and you could see the irritation on my face where they're like, woo. And I'm like, Okay, like, and as everything's getting laughs the way it should, but like, stop wooing. Okay, I don't need your support. Be mm. honest with me. Wooing doesn't mean a fucking thing, and I see it too much. And I see people content with woos, and really, you should just be trying to get laughs. I'm look. Some people do whatever you want to do. Look, I'm f fucking. I don't know what I'm talking about, but if you want to get to the point where you're getting better gigs more time, more uh, more uh, paid shit or whatever. Laughs are currency in this scene, in comedy in general, okay? Mm -hmm. So write some jokes. If you have a message behind something you have, great. That's great, whatever. But funny should be first. Funny, funny first. That's great. It's always awesome to see somebody... I think Travis has some, like, social shit where, like, he'll talk yeah. about and... But it's funny. It's funny. And then, like, you walk away going, like, that was a, that was a good point, but that was funny first. That's the way it should be. Fuck this woo shit. So That's all I have to say. Can I ask? Okay. So what if you are setting... Okay. I'm trying to use an example. Like my Britney... I have a newish Britney Spears joke where I'm like, Britney got a book deal. Let's give it up for Britney. Because I'm bringing people in. Yeah, I'm yeah, going, yeah, yeah. And I'm going like, hey, yeah good for Britney and like that usually gets woos but then I flip it on on its of head of course and that's that's it and as long as you flip it like like if you're bringing them in to create a false sense of like security only <laughs> to like bring it back oh, yeah yeah and like that's really fun yeah and like I do that with the single stuff too because I'll go like oh yeah we're all single but yeah here's my point well you're doing you're doing um, what you should be doing yeah, yeah yeah but yeah just woos or if your punchlines aren't really punchlines but they're just <laughs> simple observations not even observations but just statements that Huffington Post could have made in 2017 that people have no choice but to agree with yeah there's some people like with your Britney Spears joke they yeah. might have cut it off at the woo and be like well that's good enough for me it's like no 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 you gotta no. write 
bless them. Behind this shit. And I see yeah. that. I see it with some people who've, you know, you know, like in newer comics, you know, it's going to take them a while to find their footing. That's fine. But like people have been doing it for a few years, not just in this scene, but other scenes as well, other places. And I'm just like, why, why are we supporting bad comedy just because it aligns with our views? That's not the way it should be. Yeah. I hate that shit. So like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I it's love not the point of it. You're supposed to make people laugh. Yeah. Make people laugh. It's not dude. a TED talk. Yeah. It's not a TED talk. <laughs> If you're going to do a TED talk as a comedian, make it a TED talk. Not, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you can very well do a TED talk, but your stand up routine, stand up act yeah. is jokes. Or should yeah. Be jokes. Yeah. I mean, look, okay. Should be At jokes. the end of the day, what the fuck do I know? I'm four years into comedy. I've like, you people are, might be listening being like, what the fuck does he know? You're probably right. But four years a long I time. think, I think that most people who uh, know a thing or two about comedy, uh, will be say yeah of course like you the priorities would be funny first if there's a message behind what you're saying cool but fucking get laughs dude that's yeah. what it's all about yeah 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 that's my rant i you know i i'm not even drunk right now and i feel drunk it's hey, strange that's, that's that's the podcast yeah it's supposed to it's supposed to do that oh uh, you know i just had my coffee yeah do you have any weird vices crutches that you lean Food. on Food. For life, food. food oh, I think we've one. talked about this before. Food's but but you're pretty. You allow yourself cheat days, but you're pretty good otherwise, right? Hmm. Uh -oh. I, uh, What's going on? It's funny because Dan, like today at uh, basketball, was like, because uh, he was like, you know, for a guy who works out like almost every day, like he's not. He was just like, you're not like shredded, jacked. What? And I'm like, you're right. But like the, the fuck reason is why Dan saying, <laughs> Dan, no, no, what the fuck are you saying? But he's Chris not, looks great. He's, uh, I know I do, but I, uh, he's not <laughs> wrong. Cause like I balance it out with food. So like I work out as much as I do, but like at the same time, I eat a lot of food, especially late at night. Sometimes I've been a lot better about it lately. Quantity or, yeah. or a lot of bad food. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was just like hanging out with some friends yesterday and like they had like a spread, like a charcuterie board or whatever. And my God, did I eat? Like I, I just, just shoveling it all down. This seems to be coming up a lot on the podcast. Yeah. Um, like emotional, not, not emotional eating. That's no, like eating. It's kind of emotional eating. Eating to pass the time for me. Bored is eating. It, yeah. That's oh, it. yeah. Bored eating is brutal. Yeah. When I was like, on antidepressants, they really, it, I'm on an antidepressants right now and it takes away your appetite. Yeah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Um, but no, honestly, that's why I like to keep myself busy is because like when I'm busy, I don't eat as much as I do. When I uh, took that week off to hang out with my nieces and stuff, um, I was home every day with them. And I rem I just noticed like there'd be times where I'd be like, I just, I need to do something. Let me eat. And yeah, you you begin to eat to pass the time. And man, did I feel bad. Just be broke. You won't be able to buy food. <laughs> I can't. I'm just too fucking. Hang out here. I have like a thousand condiments and no real food in this apartment. I'm just too rich, bro. I can't. <laughs> I need to invest in some. You need to get worse with money. Because when you're bad with money, I'm let me pretty tell good you, with money. Food is fuck. Oh fuck. Yeah, I suck with money and uh, frequently will not plan correctly and end up eating like canned pasta for a couple days. Yeah, that's that's something that you shouldn't. Do. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds bad. <laughs> but yeah, that's oh, no, it is really bad. I yeah, know. but that's probably my main vice is uh, is food. But like I'm getting a lot better at it. I'm always working at it. So like, you know, lately I've been feeling pretty good. So yeah, yeah. So far. He's not perfect, everybody. No. What's I, your biggest insecurity in comedy? With mm, your comedy specifically. My comedy specifically? Um, huh. That's a good question. I don't know if I have like a real insight. Or I, is know, there an area of which you're like, I could do better in this area? Ooh. Um, sitting down and actively writing. Oh yeah. That's so, so hard. here's the thing. Like I, I'll, I journal, like I'll like take notes of thoughts I have throughout the day. And then I kind of take them like for me, anytime I've like sat down to physically write something and then take it to stage, it dies. Cause it just, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't feel right for me. For me, I have to talk things out out loud. 
Like, oh, interesting. I almost never like write a joke word for word. I never do that. Never do that because then it would come for me. It would come off as unnatural. So what I do is actually advice that I took from like Travis and Sam, which was journal. I don't fool out journal like oh here's my day, but like throughout my phone, like I have a lot of thoughts. Yes, yes, that yes. I have to. And even if there's like nothing there, right? It's just a regular thought. Like I think the other day I said like you know I hurt my foot. Ow, or like it sucks or whatever doesn't have to just to keep track of my thoughts yes 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 and then i go back and i'm like that's interesting right there Let what could then, be funny about that what could be funny about that or sometimes like the thought is just already funny on its own i'm like okay i can make something out of that and that's what a lot of my bits come from actually that's where the bipoc thing came from that's where um i'm doing a bit right now about uh white people relating to uh the struggles of like you know racialized people mm -hmm. and uh them trying to and that's been working lately and that came from another journal thought like just a little thought like just do, little blurbs like that and do you write in your phone or a physical notebook no on my phone yeah it's uh i have like a whole thing and then uh, what i'll do is like because god forbid like one day my phone gets lost or everything gets wiped i email everything to myself just so i never lose it every day I would say I do it weekly. Get a Google Doc, motherfucker. What are you doing emailing? Put or I could just live my life the way I've been a, doing what it. Are, what are you doing with e emailing notes? Just create a Google Doc with with uh so I have I like my Google Doc system. Oh wow. So you like, might have I got another water. <laughs> oh, right there. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so um I have a section for like thoughts and a section for the actual jokes. Nice. And then it's the way that Google Docs does it. Like if you make them headings, like your titles of your jokes headings, you can see them all listed on the side. No, oh, I know. I have Google Docs. Oh, yes. <clears throat> but I'm not going to do that. Why not? Then it, like, it, it's <clears throat> automatically backed up every time you update it. I like doing it the way I do it. It seems so much harder the way you're doing it. <laughs> it's I'm not. So, I am so. What? It's literally not that hard. It's so easy. You must have so many. So you e so you pull up your email and it's emails from yourself. All separate emails or one chain? Oh, separate. Let's see. How many Oh my fucking god. How many unread emails do I have right I now? I feel like that's just not uh, I have No, it doesn't say here. I have I heard I have of people emailing porn to themselves so they do so they remember the porn that they <laughs> Why I like I like the idea of somebody saying like I need to jerk <laughs> off to this later. They no, see a porn like, and they're like I need to like, I need to pencil in some time later. I don't want to do it now, so I'm going to email myself. No, you find so one I you can, like that you can then go back to. Because sometimes you might find one you like and then you can't find it again. Oh, isn't that tragic? I know. Oh, it's so depressing. I guess that makes sense. Now that I think of it, I don't know why I'm shitting on it. That's actually a good idea. Even though I don't really It's a good porn. idea, right? Yeah. Or you can just like, um, like I just keep my search history. Yeah. I don't really watch porn, <clears> though. Me neither. No. I, I, I really you don't. You know what I do porn. watch? I like watching, uh, do you know who Johnny Sins is? No. He's who's the that? bald buff porn star. Like he's bald. You Johnny see him. Sins. He did a lot of Brazzers stuff. Okay. Um, he has a YouTube channel and he is, without a doubt, like, Cause like he, he's one of the biggest male porn stars. I don't know if he still does it. He might have stopped, but he was one of the biggest male porn stars, but like legitimately the most wholesome, sweet, nicest guy, his YouTube hmm. channel. I love it because it's just him doing, and he's so nonchalant about his life, by the way, just like what he does. He's like literally like walking around saying like, yeah, you know, I'm going to go for a run right now and I'm going to cook some breakfast and then I'm going to shoot a few scenes. Okay. I'm going to do this orgy scene with these four women right here. We'll talk right after he comes back from his vlog. He's like, all right, now we're going to get something to eat. And it's just like, he's the Whoa. sweetest, nicest guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. There's a lot of memes about him. Because like he's been like a doctor, a plumber, he's been like all kinds of things in porns. And people are like, this guy's the most talented guy ever. He's like able to like and I saw his TikTok. Somebody commented. Oh my God. Somebody commented on his TikTok. He put out a, a TikTok or whatever. Again, wholesome shit. And somebody commented and said, thank you for the wonderful childhood memories, Johnny Sins. And, I'm, and everybody just responded and saying, wait, what? <laughs> like, what are you doing? It doesn't, that does not sound good. But yeah, no, I, I like I don't really watch porn, but like his stuff, no, I, I check it out on his YouTube channel because he is the sweetest guy. He's legitimately like he's he makes me want to be a better person. I thought you were gonna say he makes me want to be a porn star. <laughs> yeah. This life might be for me. Dude, I cannot imagine how hard it is to be a porn star. Oh. Whether you're a man or a woman. Oh my 
God. It's it must be so insanely hard. Yeah. I guess when you get good at it, you get good at it. But like in the beginning, like oof, that would not be a And the industry is a bit sketchy. I could imagine. What? Was that the porn industry? Is a bit, is sketchy. A bit sketchy. Interesting. I'd never heard that. <laughs> Wait, is that sarcasm? Yeah, I guess. I I'm bad at, I don't I, even know. So I realized I, for a second I was shocked. Like, oh, really? Is it sketchy? And then I realized we're talking about porn. And then you asked me if it was sarcasm. And I was like, I guess it is, but I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I I really suck with sarcasm, and I hate it about myself. I can't. Yeah, tell. you're pretty. Yeah, there's I been some tell. times. I think there's been a couple of times where like me or Kyle will say something and you'll be like, oh, really? And then we're like, and I'm like, Sarah, yeah. No. And, you're like, no. and but then but the thing is, then I try to be sarcastic and it always fails. Yeah, but that's more people. Us. People take me for what I am when I try to be sarcastic. They just believe what I'm saying. I guess so. Yeah. I don't like. Yeah, but sarcasm is just fucking played out too. And is it? It's just not that good. I, I don't like it. No. And no. I don't like when people like in, on Tinder are just oh, like, yeah. if you're not sarcastic. When did it become a point of pride to just lie to people? Because that's what sarcasm is. That's exactly. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. You might be a good person to pop off about this. Pop off. Um, <laughs> I fucking hate text for this reason. You cannot pick up on goddamn no. sarcasm. No, you can't. In fact, like you won't pick up on sarcasm. And then sometimes the tone of a text, people will overread it and be like, oh, they're being whatever. And it's like, no, no. You, yeah. yeah. But yeah, sarcasm. You so, can't pick up on it. Well, this guy that like um, I was texting with forever trying to meet up with. <clears throat> It was goddamn Snapchat that we were messaging on, which is the worst messaging app ever because you literally can't see prior messages. Yes. Um, but he he asked, uh, he want me to go for drinks at 5 p.m. That is a pretty early time to go for drinks. Thank you. And that's what I said. I've gone for 6 p.m. drinks, but 5 p.m. is like you're just off work. Right. You know so I mean? he wanted to stay downtown because he didn't want to go home to Sackville and nope. come back in. I guess. Yeah. I kind of Is that, that douchey? I don't know if it's douchey. Um, I think like for, I wouldn't, I've done that before where like I, when I lived in upper Tant Allen, I would stay in the city, but like, I wouldn't tell them that. I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm, st I don't want to go home. So can we meet earlier? I'd be like, are you able to meet this time? Let's just meet. Like, would I'm you be flexible for 100%. time? 100%. I, would, like, I wouldn't tell them to meet at five. Right. I'm not a psychopath. Like, Isn't that I, psychotic? It is weird. I, I would uh, I would just tell them, like, like what time do you want to meet? If whatever time they said, if they said, like, eight, I'd be like, oh, I don't know if I can hang around for two and a half hours or whatever. So I'll be like, how about seven? Right, right, right. Yeah. Compromise, right? But yeah, normal time. So I had written back, like, I was hoping it could be later. And this guy wrote, you're so hard to deal with. That's not. <laughs> and it was sarcasm. But I was just like. I don't know if this is sarcasm or not. It's hard to read. And it was just, it was just such an awkward experience and I hate it. I fucking hate it. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I yeah. hate the, the talking game, the texting talking. Game. Well, yeah, I try to like skip the texting thing and go right to like just meeting somebody. Like I'd rather do that. I can't fucking, cause I'm a bad texter to begin with. I hate it so much. It's like, if you want to get to know me, let's meet and, uh, let's see, let's see what you got. Are you phone? Guy talking the phone? No, no, I'm not Robbie Vino. Like, does he, oh, does Robbie talk on the phone? Robbie what? is like one of the last people I know <laughs> who will call you to uh -huh. talk. And oh, yeah, he does. Which that's is true. Which is honestly, there's like a part of me that's just like, that's kind of cool because it's like, you know, it's old school or whatever. But there are times where I'm just <laughs> He's like. He's retro. Yeah. But then there's times <laughs> where I'm just like, I don't want to hear your voice like i just just tell me what you need to tell me this is the worst is when like robbie does this and the late durham laporte used to do this as well oh. uh they would just message me and they would be like yo yeah i fucking but with hate no that. follow up as to what they want to tell they're waiting for me to say something back and i'm like just tell me what you want yeah what it hey yeah what are you doing yeah, I yeah, I don't I don't get that with people. What what is up? Did someone die? Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, uh, can you call me? Oh yeah. The, Robbie has done that to me a couple of times. Hey Chris, can you give me a call? Oh yes, to me too. I'm like, is everything okay? And then he doesn't read the message for forty minutes, and I'm like, for fuck's <laughs> sakes. And you know what I do? I instantly start thinking, what did I say in a podcast uh, to piss someone off? Oh god. Literally, like literally, I'm just like Sarah. What the fuck did you say? Oh, Are you in trouble? 
Uh, probably, yeah. Oh my God, I am. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's some things we're gonna have to cut. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I uh, I hate it. I'm right there with you, bud. Like I uh, I think uh, that's definitely. Um, it's just so frustrating. Say that again. F- oh, frustrating. Yeah, frustrating. There you go. Yeah, you don't want to sound like a fucking frustrating idiot. Um, frustrating. Nah, I, I'm kidding. My dad does the exact same thing, and when I when I tell him like it's actually frustrating, he's just like. I, my dad just doesn't he's just like i don't care yeah i'm going to say it the way i want to say it like god will, bless him he will more he people ref- should be like him yeah he refuses to make changes or compromise for anybody for better or for worse maybe you know what <laughs> i think of it i kind of get it a lot from I him was just, i was just thinking oh that. god i really am becoming my father um yeah yeah, no, that's it. You, I, so you mentioned okay, so we pranked call you prank ah, called you. I kinda I didn't know what, it, what was happening at the time. And then at, when I found out he was on the podcast like a week later, I thought maybe that's what it was. <laughs> but I had no idea. And he didn't say anything until I listened to the podcast. Cause I listened to the podcast and I was like, that's what it was. Cause you guys called Robbie first. And I was like, that makes sense. Cause it made no, I was scared, to be honest with you. I was actually kind of scared because He called me up out of nowhere to say he loves me. And I was just like, for context, Brandon Michael called me up on a previous podcast randomly just to say, hey, I love you, dude. Usually when people do that, they're in a dark place because he never does that. And so I thought, is every like we were joking around. I was like, as soon as I hung up the phone, I thought, God, I hope he's okay. (laughs) Oh, my God. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So uh, you said earlier that you and your friends don't. Um. You don't have serious talks? You don't talk about... No, no, we do. But, like, I mean, not... Is, we, it's mostly, I would say, 95% of our talks are just debauchery. And then every now and again, yeah, we do have serious talks. But, like, um, they don't last too long. It no. Don't, we, don't, we don't live in the seriousness, if that makes any sense. I feel sense. like that's most men. Is it safe to assume... Most male no, friendships? No, no, because there are some people who are just, like... Uh, there's some guys who are just, like, fucking... I've known through the past where I'm just, like, dude, like... what? Not lighten up, but like, what are you like? Why are you so miserable? You right. Know what I mean, like, fucking get out of whatever this place you're in is. Mm, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. that's what. But like, our my friends, yeah, we're just you know just constantly joking around. But there are serious talks for sure. Like, yeah. I mean, like we've all vented. Like that that group chat I was talking about. The amount of yeah if that group chat ever got released. Oh, if all of our group chats yeah, got released. Who's, who's got that? Uh, Nathan McIntosh has that bit. Yeah. It's like, release your group chats. How many of us would have like Right? That? Yep. Oh, my god, It's bad. It's definitely bad. But um, so serious talks, yeah, we definitely do. And I think it's important. I mean, sometimes you got to fucking stop mm. being so on. Are, are a lot of them about comedy or like life? Comedy and life. We do actually. Like, I mean, it is funny. Like, it's... We have... Like, I'm so glad we have that group chat in particular because, yeah, like, I mean, we've all gone through this last couple of years has been rough. Right. So that chat right there has helped. I know a few people in that chat for sure. Like Mm. having each other. It was great just to be able to be like to vent and to like, you know, hear somebody, especially like, you know, when um, uh, Durham died recently. Um, What? (laughs) Oh, you didn't hear about Durham. (laughs) Um When he died, yeah. I mean, like, I'm glad we had that chat because, like, you know, a lot of people in that chat were super (laughs) close with Durham. It was many days before a lot of us found out. I remember that because, like... Yeah, we found... Well, because they wanted to keep it under wraps, obviously. It was the family's decision. And it makes sense. It's... it's Why we... We found out the next day. Did you get a phone call? No, no. uh, We found out in the chat, you know. No fucking way. Whose message was that? Brandon. Fuck, man. Yeah. Oh, my fuck. It was tough. It was definitely Holy tough, but like shit. having each other definitely helped. And especially like, you know, obviously Brandon, Jim, and Kyle, like there were some people who were super close with Durham. You know, me and Durham were friends, but we weren't like close, uh, close, close. We weren't close, close. We were definitely like friends, but like not like, cl- like him and Brandon. Yeah, super Matt, Matt. close. Like him, and, yeah. him and Maya, super close. So like, we definitely all wanted to reach out and just make sure everybody was okay. You know, it was Fuck, definitely a, man. It was a tough time, man. Like what that's a what message it is. to fucking get in the group chat. Like you open it up just thinking it's going to be like nonsense. Oh my God. Yeah. And Cause I like think that? that, I think right before that it was pure nonsense too. Oh like, my yeah. God. And it didn't, it didn't take long for us to start joking around or whatever. How long? I feel like 
one of us stop said something it. like, "Stop!" Now, how I, long? I don't know how long it took, but it definitely didn't take long for us to start. Obviously, we were still in the sadness, but we were like, "That's what we do." Like, I'm sure that after Vaughn died, I I think you mentioned it, like how quickly like everybody started like making jokes about his death. Yeah, but that chat was formed after everybody got an individual phone call. Right. Yeah. You're so the one everybody got it, and as soon as you got the phone call. You were added to the chat. I feel like this situation's different. I wasn't in that chat, though. You just called me. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You called me. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, Why did I call you? I, well, like, like, I, like, I mean, like, no offense, but I'm just, I'm just like, trying to think back why yeah. you were one of the only, I think I might have called maybe, like, maybe three or four other friends that night. I, but uh, you were in that group, and I don't know why. I don't, oh, you were recently on the Boys Club podcast. Like maybe it was because like you were tighter with Vaughn than yeah I, than a lot of those other comics that I done a, the podcast a couple of times and then I did solo literally a couple weeks before it happened. That's and, probably why I probably just considered yeah. you closer well, I think with Vaughn than others. It, well, we were getting there. Like yeah. Vaughn and I were starting to get like like he was always a big supporter, uh, like very nice to me, and uh, we were starting to get close. So mm -hmm. yeah, like when you called me, I wasn't out. Of, the only thing that made me uncomfortable was you crying. <laughs> You're just sniffling like an asshole. Like, I'm, 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 and I'm just like, dude, fucking get over Emotion it. Emotion isn't so bad, Chris. Let it in. I know, dude. I'm so bad with that shit. That's another thing You're that's wrong really with me. You're really bad at that. I am bad with emotion. The only thing that really, like, hits me is when, like, a child gets hurt. But, like, for the most part, I don't get emotional. What's like, the I worst thing? <laughs> What's the worst thing that's happened to you in your life? Well, I mean, there's plenty of stuff that's happened. I mean, and did and did you tap into emotion then? Hmm. It's been years. See, here's the thing. This is it's fucking. It's kind of like the Yellowstone uh, volcano where I know something is gonna happen eventually, and it's gonna all come out. But it's been years since there's been super bad tragedy, like in my family in particular, especially right. if a loved one. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's been a while. Uh, see, this that's the thing about. People who've dealt with a lot of trauma or loss, they build up this weird resilience to it. But those who might not have, like, it's like with death. Like when when you meet someone who literally hasn't lost someone yet. Oh, I've lost. Like it's I mean, like fuck. I've it's lost. Coming. I've lost what a lot of people have lost. I lost like uh, I've lost my grandmother. I saw like that was the first death I remember was in 1996. My grandmother. I saw her body and like that stuck with me. Next one was uh, my grandfather. Obviously, Do you find grandparents a bit different though. Like I feel like when it's a parent for me, or a friend, it's for me it's not different because we were all really close. And my oh, grandmother. Yeah. And you know what really impacted me about like my grandmother and grandfather dying was just seeing how it impacted my parents. Especially Especially my dad. Yeah. Because my dad is super cold, super tough. And to see him break down in tears was just that's like, that fuck. stuck with me. That that's, that stuck with me too when, yeah. when my grandmother died. Yeah. And then there's other non-death related situations that I've seen like to tie back to the whole drug abuse, uh, substance abuse thing, seeing with like some people who are super close to me firsthand. That stuck with me as well. And right. I didn't cry in those situations either. Like it just little by little, I... I worry and, about things like this because, like, it's a volcano, like you said. Also, my job mm. has kind of desensitized me to a lot of things. Oh, that would force you to. Because I covered any tragedy that happened in Nova Scotia in the last few years, which has been a few. The triple murder in Upper Big Trackety, the Nova Scotia mass shooting, um, the Barho fire where those seven children died. I was there for all of it. And you just learn to develop a thick skin. Obviously, I see the tragedy. I see how bad it is, but there's also like I'm able to do it. Although I did see some reporters not able to do it. I see like like a lot of people were impacted by it. Mm. Me, obviously, I was impacted, but I kept that shit in. I acknowledged how bad it was, but the active, the active motion of crying. I haven't cried since maybe 2005. That's like wild. I, yeah, I don't. I don't cry. Mm. I. Um, it will happen. I know it will. What do you think it will take? I don't even want. To, I don't even want to say because like loss uh, of like close family. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. I don't even want to think about it. I don't want to think but about it. But that just goes to show that like, like when you're when you have a small circle. Yeah. It's so much harder. Like when when you're yeah. only close with a small amount of people. Yeah. Um, it means that when those losses happen, it'll be 
far, far worse. It'll be worse. I do have a lot of people in my life. um, But yeah, I mean, Jesus, the idea of losing somebody. I know it'll happen and I know I'm going to be a mess when it does. I don't even want to think about it. I'm living in the now. But yeah, that is a that is a thing. I do have emotional issues. I don't I don't know how to be emotional. Like anytime like I hear about like somebody crying. Do you, do you ever get the feeling of, like even just the feeling of wanting to cry? Like that little Not feeling the, feel- in, the feeling in your never, nose? Never the feeling or in my nose, stomach? but I never the feeling in my nose or stomach. Uh I just I feel the sadness. I acknowledge it's bad and then I kind of just I don't cry. But like I'm whatever you're feeling in that moment, like the sadness, it's in me, but I don't sorry, I was It doesn't my, physically it doesn't physically come out. Like, you know, I'm kind of like, uh, oddly enough, when people are messes around me, I'm able to kind of calm down, if that makes any sense. I, I see them and I'm like, all right, somebody needs to kind of like hold it together right now. Yeah, you're the, you do on crisis. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've seen some shit. And uh, yeah, little by little, I've kind of developed, I don't even want to say thick skin. Like, I hate that term. I just, I've been a little desensitized to certain things that may impact people more then it would impact me. And it's mm. a lot of it is my job. Mm. Yeah. So if you're a paramedic too, oh my God, I cannot oh imagine my being, God. Cannot imagine being a paramedic. Cannot imagine being a first responder. Oh my God. Cannot. Like I, I just report on this shit. I don't actually have to go and see the shit. Yeah, I don't know what, uh, I mean, there should be, I don't know how it is, but I, there should be specific mental health support for those people. Not as much as you like. There, not as probably not as much as there should be. Definitely not as much as there should be. Have you ever done therapy or anything like that? <laughs> no, no. I probably should. I know my ex has been fucking like getting on me about that. <laughs> like, Would you? Would you ever go in with like yeah, a but it's with another, a open mind? Of course, of course. But like, it's one of those things where it's just like I don't have time for therapy right yeah. now. I'm good. Here's the thing. I'm happy. Obviously, I have my issues, but there's nothing in my life that's. Uh, catastrophic i'm not like heading down a bad place i'm pretty i'm in a pretty good place do i have things i need to work on of course i do we right, all right, do right. but in the meantime it's not the stuff that's wrong with me isn't fucking with my being and more importantly fucking with other people got you got you got you does that make sense no for sure it's you got stuff but it's not it's not uh push is not coming to shove yet that's right and it will Oh, Watch will. out. Oh, I know. Hey. Mid 30s is rough. Who's going to be there to see it? Mid 30s is is not a fun time. We have another segment, though. Hey. The last segment. Let's do it. Um, Hopefully, this won't get us, you, <laughs> canceled. <laughs> nah, no. Um, I would love to know do you have an unpopular opinion? Don't hate me for this, but it's time for an unpopular opinion. Is that the song? No, Pretty that's much. the other one. Yeah. Okay. Unpopular opinion. This one won't get me canceled. Uh, although we do have to cut some things. Um, Dear God. <laughs> can sorry. you give me a no. list after? <laughs> no, I can only think of one thing. We'll talk about it after. Um, unpopular opinion. Um, and you might disagree with this. In fact, you. I feel like you might have said something along the lines that goes against what I'm about to Ooh, say. Ooh, let's hear it. I believe that you can be friends with people you've dated. I feel like you can be friends with them after the fact. That is an unpopular opinion because it's weird. The amount of people I'm I've dated who I'm still friendly with or still friends and actively talk to, like it's it's I'm very fortunate in that like they weren't tainted with like any kind of resentment between us. Um, Were you in love with them? Hmm. <laughs> so here's my the honest, the honest, the honest, the honest answer. No. So here's I'm friends with people who've broken my heart yeah that we haven't dated and ha- we have recovered from that yeah um but it's a weird thing Ugh, i hate bringing up demisexuality because i know it's like such a stupid term uh-huh. but it's, it's one of those things that like i don't like many people when i do i really like you but what that means is when i'm over it i am so over it that it does not affect me anymore so I could be friends with someone who hurt me, yeah. who, who previously hurt me. Yeah. Um, but I guess the two relationships that I've had that ended so ter- I think it depends on how the relationship ends. Because if it's like if there's cheating or something like that, yeah, well, that's, that's hard to recover from. But like I've heard so many people like 
talk about it where I'm like, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm still friends with like people I've dated or I'm friends with my ex, the one that, you know, and uh, like uh, people are like, oh, I could never be friends with my ex. She's a whole bitch. And I'm just like, what happened? And but he's just like, oh, we just grew apart. And I'm like, that's why you hate her? So because you guys were in different places in life? Fuck that, but man. see how he's saying that? Oh, just There's passion angry. behind it, which means at one point he probably really loved that person. But even then, like, I think that you, because we fall in love and then we fall out of love and then we can move on. And then to me, I really truly believe that people have it in them to be adults. And if you care about the person enough, which I still care about the people I've dated, um, it's easy like to just be friends with them. It's Is it like really easy though. Well, here's the thing. Like every relationship I've had, like it didn't end well because it ended. When a relationship ends, it's never like mutual, but you enough time passes and you realize they're not bad people. I'm not a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Are we gonna be buddy buddies? Like, here's the thing. Like me and, and my ex, mm-hmm. like we're we're friends. We don't see each other that often, but we'll message every now and again. Uh, we right. might grab a that's coffee. A he- healthy friendship. Yeah, we that's might a grab- friendship with boundaries. Yeah, yeah, and we might grab a coffee. Uh, you know, once every while. It's been a while, but like, mm-hmm. it's to me the way I look at it is like, yeah, like if you're just two mature adults, and if it didn't end, like where if one of you cheated or mm-hmm. did something horrendous. Mm-hmm. I think it's possible to be friends, but there's too many people I who will put up their blinders where it's just like I could never be friends with this well, person. Well, uh, but but the, but that's the thing, right? I think I think well, I think if the love was really there in love, yeah, not just someone I like who I was seeing, has to be like crazy intense love. Um, what am, where am I going with this? Um, and you've been you gave yourself space to get over it, yeah. Then it's possible, but yeah. if you go jump right into being friends with well, no space, nobody. That's when that. it gets murky because for sure one of those people still has feelings. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like nobody's saying like immediately be friends with them, but yeah. I do think that time can pass, and you know you can like time, have a, yes. a healthy report. Are you gonna be like, eh, let's fucking go grab beers and like mm. hang out, like all of us get like no. But I think you can definitely be friendly or friends with somebody or like at least close acquaintances or something like that. The amount of them I still talk to. I think it also helps just not being a dick. Because that's the thing about me is like I I, I think there what is go. it? I'm a bad boyfriend, but not. I don't think anybody I've dated would ever say I'm a bad person. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. They're like, he's a bad boyfriend, but not a bad person. Wait, what makes what makes a bad boyfriend? I'm not attentive. I mean, like, <laughs> I, I'm sorry for some reason I wasn't expecting that answer. I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of, I, uh, I hate social settings. I don't talk to anybody. I just like, you know, I don't see them that often. I'm not willing to put in the work, you know, fucking all that shit. You know what it is. You don't do the quality time. I think the analogy I used to work, uh, use, and I tried doing this on stage and never worked quite, but like, you know how in school you have group projects. Yeah. And how like there was always one person in the group who fucking contributed nothing. That's me in relationships. I am that person. And the person I'm dating is every other person in the group. And so like, that's what it is. It's like, I just don't, I don't put in my part. I don't put in like the effort to like help out trying to make this thing afloat. And it's Mm -hmm. not out of any, any kind of malicious thing. It's just, it's not even laziness. It's just Maybe I'm just not in that place to be in a relationship. But like any person I've dated, for the most part, I'm sure they'd be like, "Yeah, I mean, he was he sucked as a boyfriend, but like he's not a bad dude." And that's why I'm still friendly with yeah. so many of them. So, and that's why I think that depends. It really does depend on how things ended and why they ended. Like, yeah. if there's manipulation and lying and cheating, it's far harder to be of friends course. with that person after. But I also understand the sentiment of like. Holy shit! Like I dated this person; they're part of my life for so long. Yeah. Um. Be, it'd be nice to stay in touch and be friends. Of course. I would. I would be friends with my with my second boyfriend. Yeah. If if he would be down to do that, and he left me and married someone else. But that's that's the thing, though. Like, I mean, that's good. Like, I, I and I truly believe that that's probably a thing that could have happened. But there's so many people that when I say like I'm friends with like an ex, they're always just like red, f- like they think it's a red flag. They or think something. it's a red flag, or they're like that. Oh, fucking that's Honestly, no. There's there's feelings still there. I'm just I, I <laughs> no. I still am gonna not even. I, it's the end of the episode. I'll just like say it. I still think you have not had someone that you've felt that intense about to be that hurt to where you could not be friends again. I'll maintain that. You and probably, this is no look, disrespect to no, any no. ex-girlfriends of yours. Nah. But I think 
Like, no, she's disrespecting all you guys, man. Uh, but have you ever been in love so intense that you would be like, I would throw myself in a train for you? I in a train, I, in front of a train. <laughs> I mean, what you just described isn't love. That's just a mental disorder. Do not throw <laughs> yourself you know in front I mean? of a train. Yeah, like but yeah, I've, I've had that. Have you? Yeah, when, okay. I was, when I was younger, but like, okay, it's not like I. Uh, I feel like the per like the person that I'm thinking of in particular, like who's who was that person that was that into, is married with kids now. But I've seen them a couple of times because they still live like I think in Bedford or some shit, and I've seen them a couple of times just randomly, and it's always just nice. Like, well, are we tight? No, but like it's friendly, and it, like there's no feelings there. Enough time has passed. Enough time has passed, and that's what that's my point. It's like oh, yeah, enough I mean, time can time. pass. Well, that's the whole thing. I'm okay, not saying. I agree. I'm, I not agree. Saying, I'm not saying you can be friends immediately after a breakup. <laughs> Like, you know, that's not I, what I'm saying. I just, I, I don't know if I, and maybe this is just my jealous personality, Yes, but I don't know if I could date someone who is close with their accents. I get that. And see, that's the thing. I never, um, like friends, like every now and then say hi, text, like, yeah, that's fine. But like close buddy, buddy friends. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. And that it, would be tough. For and me. believe me, like if I respect that boundary with like, you know, anybody I've dated, if they're like in a serious thing. I'm like, I'm not going to like, you know, hey, like, wh why yeah. are we talking? Even? No, it's like, if you want to grab a coffee sometime, great. But like, I understand that boundary and I get it, I get it from either point of view, the guy, the girl, whoever it may be, where it's like, yeah, that that might be weird. Yeah. Yeah. So I I wouldn't begrudge that. But yeah, I do yeah. think that you can be friendly with somebody. I think you can just be an adult and enough time passes. I feel like you can still be friends with somebody. Like, here's the thing. I barely see most of my friends. So it'd be like that. I haven't right, right, seen right. my friends Tom and Brad and and Sean in like a year, but they're still good friends of mine. Does that, that make just, sense? That should be an adult. Adult friendship. Yeah, me and Dan talk about this all the time. Yeah, adult friendships are fucking hard, and they, they don't look the same as friendship in your twenties. Brother, ain't that the truth? Um, what was I gonna fucking ask you? Would you ever date a female comic, or do you just like their pictures on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. God bless you. <laughs> Me? What the fuck? I just, I, I do see you liking like, like hot female comics all the time. Who? Um, oh, are you talking about like, you know, famous ones or whatever? Yeah, yeah, famous oh, that's ones. that's different though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's different. But I, I always, I always wonder if, if, I always ask that to comics though. Would you date a comic? Uh, this is like the famous question. I mean, I don't know. Probably, probably not. But uh, you know, separating would. Is yeah, I mean, like nice. it's 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 I yeah exactly. I uh, fuck. I I barely date in general. So like to just narrow it down to a comic. Who knows? I it can't would be convenient for you though. I guess you'd so. be able to do comedy and like also have a date. <laughs> Just do an open mic together. Oh God! I can, oh yeah, well there's a couple. Of, there's a couple in the scene who wouldn't mind. Ugh. Um, mm, pro, I'm leaning no, but I wouldn't say okay. Yeah. So it's not a hard no. It's a. It's not a hard no, but like this scene is small enough where I'm just like, eh. I still think if you like someone enough, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, but it, it would be a, if you like that. So that that I should just let you uh, female comics in this scene. No, I don't like you guys that much. So there you go. Didn't have to convince me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking with everybody. You're all great. You're all great. Everybody's lovely. Everybody's fine. Everybody, all good people. The, keep working. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Uh, keep. Uh, you got all the tools. Keep writing. Keep. <laughs> Keep at it. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm fucking around. But yeah, I'm I'm leaning no. I'm leaning yeah, yeah, yeah. No. But like, yeah, that's understandable. You know, I don't know, fucking dude. I barely date anybody to begin with. So like, what what am I gonna like? I don't know. Yeah, it's it it's fucking hard and stupid and a crazy thing to do. So. Yes, that that it, that it is. Um, we're here. We're doing it. It is two o six. It is coming on six thirty. So oh, yeah. let's end her. Oh. Um. So yes, Chris, where can people? Find you, follow you. When uh, when's this come out? This will be on Friday. <laughs> oh, this Friday. Oh wow. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> oh wow. You really together, had I nobody swear. lined up. Okay. I really had no one lined up. That's fine. No um, backlogs. Okay. Uh, 
June 3rd and 4th, I'm going to be at Yuck Yucks. I'm middling. Uh, Claire Belford hosting. Rob Pugh headlining. He's a monster Canadian headliner. Shit. I'm looking forward to that one. That's going to be a good time. June 18th, I'm going to be a Good Robot. Uh, that should be a fun show. But the big one, June 22nd, Carlton. Two shows, early show, late show. The original Asses of Halifax Comedy. We're doing a comedy album recording a mixtape it's going to be a bunch of us doing some of our best shit it's going to be a good time travis Lindsay is hosting come on out tickets are only 15 bucks you got nothing planned then come out don't be a piece of shit it's going to be a good time and uh yeah follow me chris halef all one word at instagram all that shit tiktok this guy is one of the few who actually puts out content which yeah that's a like quick aside on that do that more, people. Chris is very, you put, you make clips, you put, oh, content. Yep. Um, you are um, a useful comedian to follow yes. versus some comics who don't yeah. and have I, a presence at all. And I believe, and, and I that's believe, fine too. yeah, of course. I actually, like, you know, a couple people asked me, he's like, aren't you worried about burning material? We we talked about this earlier, but oh, like, yeah. no, dude, we're not famous. Okay. We're not Taylor Tomlinson. We're not Bill Burr. We're not Dave Chappelle. Like, it doesn't matter. Put out stuff. See if you can get yourself some followers. Since putting out like new clips and stuff, my followers have gone up and I've, yes. I've actually booked some of my best paid gigs by putting up YouTube videos or like an yes. Instagram reel. Like a couple of like I can think of off the top of my head. If I had not posted those clips, I wouldn't have gotten those. So sometimes people will find you and be like, hey, you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, sure. So yeah, fucking uh, put it out there. Let's grow this scene. It's Why the something hell not? that I think I think comics just hate doing things like that, like self-promotion or... Well, there's that whole old school think, mentality where it's like, oh, you know, you fucking uh, just uh, don't don't uh, try too hard. Wait till you're like chosen or something. Fuck that, man. Make your own opportunities. It's going to get you booked more because you're going to be more appealing to bookers yes if yes. you and this is why i do think comics should have podcasts too yeah uh, although it's a lot of work and not Definitely. everyone's cut out for it but like it's stuff like that like you're just you're you're exposing yourself to That's more right. people it's a lot of work not everybody's cut out for it you hear that dan and travis you fucking nerds no they'll, take that they will there, yeah no who's who's their producer me oh uh, i'm sure it's gonna be great right yeah that, that's <laughs> why they're going to Make it happen. Yeah, they're gonna go right I'm, to the top. I'm I'm the project manager. Yeah, there you go. You're the Jamie. Oh, I'll I'll uh, show you the their trailer um <laughs> after this. Uh, but Chris, thank you so much thank for coming you, sir. on. I really appreciate it. And don't be don't be so hard on yourself. You're doing good. All right. I didn't ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, you're I don't, you're I, respected. I mean, this is this. Th we, I I don't feel that way. I get it. We don't have to go down this rabbit hole again, but all I'm saying is you should ding, be ding, proud. Ding. Okay, thank you. You should be proud too. All right, bye-bye. Thank you, guys. We're done. 210. Hey. Thank you for listening to the Intoxicated Podcast. If you enjoyed this week's episode, make sure you subscribe on whatever podcast app you use and leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. You can also give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram at Intoxicated Podcast and check out our video episodes on the Intoxicated YouTube channel. Until next week, feel hard and talk hard. Intoxicated Podcast is hosted and produced by Sarah McClellan, co-produced by Sarah Nicole, and brought to you by The Messiness of Life. Oh, everybody's depressed. Next subject.